E okoranga tira, tina koutou katoa. We acknowledge that there is a strength beyond ourselves when we work together to serve others. May we put aside our own personal interests, work with integrity and openness, striving to create a community that supports its people and the environment. Let us, in a moment of quiet, focus on why we're here. We give thanks for the wisdom of the past, look for opportunities in the present, and accept the challenges of the future. Thank you. Well, good afternoon one and all. Um, can I just advise everybody first and foremost that this meeting is being live streamed. So it will be, it's going out through our Facebook page and will be available on the Napier City Council YouTube channel uh, at a later date as well. There may be some audio uh, recording as well. And we are, I hope, going to have Councillor Wise coming in by electronically in some way. And I understand people are working on that right now. Can I also ask, seen as such a big crowd, can I ask that we give absolute respect to each speaker? There will be some people that are, that are putting a theory forward that you disagree with, things you will agree with, but please give respect to all of those who speak and listen to them before, and, and, and I certainly will not accept uh, interjections. We, uh, are there any apologies, councillors? At the moment, we have an electronic apology from Councillor Wise. Um, are there any conflicts of interest? There are none. We move on to our public forum. Now, our public forum, we have a very large list of speakers. We're restricted to 30 minutes for a public forum, so we have 10 speakers down, um, and so they get three minutes each. So um, if we can get underway with that, I have on the first on the list is Annie Dundas from Tourism. Sorry, the microphones go automatically when you speak. You don't have to turn them on and off. And thank you, Mayor Bill. Um, kia ora, and um, thank you for letting us, me speak today. I am here on behalf of our tourism industry, many of whom will line up behind me. And I would also like to acknowledge everybody in this room who clearly has a, a passion and wants to see um, a resolution, hopefully, today. Um, we as representatives of the industry acknowledge and honour the enormous contribution made by those before us and firmly believe the name War Memorial should be reflected in or on this important building. It is the professional opinion of the industry that both references to the memorial and to conferencing can coexist as they have done so previously. This then reflects and acknowledges an important function of the facility alongside it being a memorial to those who served and died for their country. We all have the very great privilege of getting to promote Hawke's Bay to the world, sharing our region's stories and heritage, encouraging people to come here to learn about what we, why, the, why we are the way we are, and this facility is very much a part of that. It is a venue that serves our local community, but is also a very meaningful location to welcome visitors from around the country and beyond. We would like to see a compromise reached. Perhaps this venue should be called the Napier War Memorial Conference Centre, an acknowledgement to the past, but also recognising its place in the future. We can talk at length about commercial goodness and reality of this venue, but I think that's a little bit rich today. I do have one uh, member of our group, Angie, who couldn't be here today when the date shifted, and she just wanted to pass on some of the facts and figures around a recent conference she held um, in Napier. 300 people attended from the, Nation, from the uh, uh, Geographic, New Zealand Geographical Society. We used not only the conference centre, but a range of other facilities, the aquarium, the emporium, uh, shed two, crab farm winery. 365 nights of accommodation were booked across multiple properties in Hawke's Bay. They purchased gifts, additional conferencing was held with additional uh, meetings for over 130 odd people. The positive impact for the city was huge, and an additional 150,000 was generated for the city. 
It is our firm belief that we can coexist together with a name that respects both the past and the future, and I do hope that you will see the tourism industry's professional viewpoint on this. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Kerry Ann Gibbs. Yeah, just pull the mic up. I'd love to do that up on your house. Eh? Is it me you can't hear, or is it the presenters? <laughs> I, think, I think you just answered the question. Is it me you can't hear, or the presenters? Ah, right, let's go. Thank you for affording me the opportunity to speak. I do appreciate it. Firstly, I'd like to assure everyone that I'm 100% behind the name Napier War Memorial. I understand the significance of this. My grandfather's name and that of my great-uncle's names are on the gates of remembrance in Queenstown, and our family takes great, great pride in this fact. And whenever I'm in Queenstown, I take time to visit the gates. I propose the Napier War Memorial Conference Centre. The word conference is vital to the region's ability to attract domestic and international conferencing. By allowing the word conference to sit beside Napier War Memorial, you will further the economic growth of this fine region, honouring the deeds of our forefathers. I thank you for this consideration. Thank you, Kerry Ann. Katie Nimmin. Good afternoon and thank you for your time. Uh, I am the fifth generation of a family company that's been around Hawke's Bay for 113 years and we've been through it all, we've seen it all and we 100% support the War Memorial name. However, as kerri -Ann and Annie mentioned, for us it is so important that a name tells you what the business does. Napier War Memorial Conference Centre would be to us as we would be Nimmin Luxury Passenger Transport or Nimmin Bus Company or anything that describes what that business does. We go out of the region a lot with this business and quite often it is hard for anyone to recognise what Nimmin's is outside of the region but to all of you in Hawke's Bay you would know what that meant. The name is important, War Memorial is important, Conference is important and we also propose a compromise of Napier War Memorial and Conference Centre. That there, a name in itself, means a lot to everybody, but it means a lot to business and to the people where War Memorial matters most. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Neil Barber. Good afternoon. Sorry, I wasn't actually aware that I was on the speaker's list, but I'm very happy to <laughs> have a few words. I'm a co-owner of the Art Deco Masonic Hotel. Um, conference business is exceptionally important to us, largely because that business um, comes in the shoulder seasons um, where it's hard to, to attract visitors um, to Napier. So conference business is important to us. Um, as the other speakers have said, we all support the retention of the words War Memorial. It's important, but we would like to see the complex called the Napier War Memorial Conference Centre. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. Um, now, Reuben, is Reuben here? Reuben speaking on behalf of his wife, Fiona, who's unfortunately travelling today. So. All right, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, dear councillors, we've read a fair amount around the changes at the Napier Conference Centre and the public response to the name change and relocation of the eternal flame. We acknowledge the historical significance of the War Memorial contribution to the building and the rousing public sentiment that this has generated. For many years, the title Napier War Memorial Conference Centre encompassed the important legacy of the building while acknowledging its current form as a meeting venue for local, domestic, and international visitors alike. We support a return to this title, which gives a, a nod to the past, while still stating the function of the building and its aspirations for the future. 
It's a venue that serves our local commun community, but it's also a stunning location to welcome visitors from around the country and beyond. We can't think of another such venue in New Zealand that can top that view. We appreciate the significant contribution that the Napier ratepayers have put into a modern, well-equipped and safe building that is forward-looking but also has obligation to the past. The Napier War Memorial Conference Center is a title that is a marriage of both historical acknowledgement and commercial usage. We support a return to this title in all forms of promotion and are happy to return all our collateral that mention the venue to this title as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, uh, Ruben. The next speaker is Grace Hayden. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to address the fact that this is not a commercial building. This is a war memorial which was facilitated with public meeting halls within it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we've got to honour the way that the property was um, obtained, which was by way of it being a memorial to the fallen, and we must not digress from that. I've put together a bit of a PowerPoint addressing the issues. We've spent nearly $7 million doing it up, and in the news we read about an eye-watering 100000 that it's going to cost to rebrand. We have had too much spin. We've got to cut the bullshit and start dealing with facts. Council has a legal obligation to do due diligence before it votes on issues of name changes on historic properties. Also, the annual reports for the last three years reflect that spending has gone up from 0.6% of our rates to 1.4% of our rates and it reflects in $800,000. So let's put the, proper, the um, issues of costs aside. We have spent so much on converting a memorial into a commercial venture, we now have to honour the memorial. The eternal flame, I believe, is alleged to still have proof of life. Proof of life was very one moment just for the photograph. What I propose is a win-win situation, one that will enhance tourism. We have got magnificent state statues around Napier. Why not have the eternal flame as something like a campfire that, um, with brass soldiers around it, which actually balance up the, the, the fishermen at the other end of Marine Parade? We can be totally um, imaginative with this. There's no need for us to have the old dish flame. Also, the Mrs. Hayden, can I just say that, that we're not talking about building the rebuilding the War Memorial. We're talking about the name of the complex. Yes, I, it, and it, I think you've gone a little bit off the subject. No, I, it, this ties in because what I'm I'm looking at is I was in El Paso last year, where they had a very innovative memorial wall, which was a historic wall, which was a touch wall, which was made by a New Zealand company, and you could have a Roll of Honour, touch on Joe Bloggs, his heritage comes up, where he lived, where he died, who his siblings were, and all of this can be funded by the conference centre, which has a lawful obligation not to be a commercial thing. The papers that we signed way back in the 1940s and 50s said that the conference centre must not be a, a um, a money-making venture. Also, the costs that we charge for the conference centre, I've done research, which shows that $500 for a morning is absolutely ludicrous. Similar ventures well, like well, the again, museum again, sorry, Mrs. $8, sorry, Mrs. Hayden. $8,000. We're now talking sorry. about our costs and charges, so we're, we're yes. well off the subject. No, we're, talking, what I'm saying, uh, we're working about that, and, and, and your time is up, so yes, thank you. Thank you. What I'm saying is that we are not sorry, Mrs. Hayden, your time, your time is up. Costs. Greg Morley. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, councillors. Um, first of all, we don't need conference in the name or memorial centre to attract clients and be successful. There's many local hospitality businesses that don't have conference in their names, yet they run very cost-effective conference centres. And there's so many of them around here. We've got Church Road, Wine Mission, State Warrenage, Silky Oak, Ormley Lodge, East Pier Hotel, the Crown Hotel, Masonic Hotel, Blue Water Hotel. There's so many. 
And if you really want big conferences, i.e. a thousand people, we've got the municipal theatre. The thing with all these conference centres around, uh, around Napier is that they have unique features, <laughs> excuse me, um, be it wine, art deco, heritage buildings or chocolate. They all offer something unique to gain a competitive edge. A War Memorial Conference, a War Memorial Centre with conference facilities is unique. It needs to be sold as being unique. There are 250,000 plus members of the RSL and RSA that are looking for unique, memorable and honourable locations to have their conferences. We have tens of thousands of servicemen, be it Air Force, Navy, Army, Territorial Forces, Police, Firefighting Personnel, who have the highest regards of our fallen soldiers and the memory of them. These civil servants have pride and respect in our past. For them, a war memorial with conference facilities is more meaning than a standard conference centre. Excuse me if I'm going too fast, but I have limited time. The inclusion of conference in the name is not the public, public choice. A recent so social media um, poll indicated three times more people wanted the name War Memorial Centre than the name War Memorial Conference Centre. This was a local site of over 26,000 members. We only have to look at, uh, uh, oh, sorry, we don't have to look far to see another successful working business model that doesn't need conference centre in its name. This, this is the Wanganui War Memorial. I'm sure that you've all seen the business case and how well this memorial is done um, in the papers that have been sent to you. The renaming of their conference and convention centre, which is a mouthful on its own, to War Memorial Centre saw no negative impact on business, income, tourism or client satisfaction. So to sum up, the public and I sincerely hope that you make the wise choice today. <laughs> At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. June Graham. Oops, I'd better sit in the chair. My name is June Graham. I live at Tarradale. I am a Grey Power member, though I do not speak for this group today. However, many of our members are annoyed and even angry at the change of name to the Napier War Memorial Conference Centre, which, has, which it has been known since 2000. From the two public meetings I attended, it was confirmed that we were not alone in this view. For my age group, who lived through these difficult times, this is a place of special significance. It was, it was expected to be like Anzac Day, a special memorial and a reminder of the sacrifices made and of the sadness, horror, waste and futility of war. These sentiments are as relevant today as ever and equally so for current and future generations. I acknowledge and congratulate the Council's decision to amend this and restore the name Napier War Memorial as a prime reference with the words conference centre underneath. I I've got here position below. This would be reflected in all branding. I acknowledge and accept that the centre is suitable for attracting conferences to Napier and the commercial benefits they bring. In this instance, commercial and, commun and community should not be mutually exclusive. I am sure the lessons have been learned from this example of what can happen if the public are overlooked when making decisions of this importance. The Council misread the depth of feeling and passion around this whole issue. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. The cost of putting it right becomes irrelevant. Uh, um, I'd like to add um, something else. Um, yesterday I read again item three on the agenda. Lo and behold, today's talking point in Hawke's Bay today expressed my concerns and, and conclusions on the subject. Thank you, Kirsten. She can't hear me, I suppose. Finally, bless you, Isabel Morgan. We are in agreement with Napier added. Napier War Memorial Conference Centre. Sound, to me, it sounds just right. Thank you. Thank you, June. Charlie.
what's in a name? In the name of the war memorial lays the history of this city, lays the, the memory of what happened in the past. You can't erase that by adding all of a sudden conference center. When I was born and raised on the battlefields of Flanders, memorials are holy there. You don't change a memorial, you don't change a name, you don't touch them. People died and, and fought for this country. The, this country wouldn't be as it is without their contribution. Trying to change that for commercial purposes is wrong. It's not a matter, it hasn't got to be a matter of this or that. It is a war memorial in the first place. No one opposes conferences there. I'm sure they don't, and no one would. But to use the word conference in the name to change that holy place to something with a commercial slant is very wrong. Removing the war memorial or the original memorial was, well, it wasn't accessible enough. How accessible has it been over the last year and a half? And then there was the excuse it wasn't complete. Well, I can assure you I've represented Belgium on inaugurations of additional plaques to memorials in the UK. None of the memorials is complete because they were compiled in the 1950s and 60s when not all the information was there. But no, to change the whole lot on the excuse that it wasn't complete is wrong. Listen to the people. In the 20 years ago in Belgium, the federal government was going to put a road to the battlefields and oh, there was a small problem. There was a cemetery in the way. But don't worry, we're going to move that and it's going to do with be done with dignity. There was an uproar. The whole population raised their voice. And that is what I hope that the population here will realize and that the councillors will realize. The power of people when they stand united. The power of people when they feel that their heritage, their history is under threat for the sake of commerce. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy, your turn. She's letting me talk with... Oh, she is coming forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just one thing I want to get out of the way. I, I'm a bit sad that um, my father's death and uh, her uncle's death can be put into money to terms at 142,000 over 800. It's something like $75, I think. Their sacrifice is a little bit more than that. But that's to one side. I'm going to put the cat amongst the pigeons. Speaking as an almost retired solicitor, you cannot change a name. It is a war memorial. It is a war memorial, though. Although you received advice through the Auditor General, it is an asset of the, of the Council. It is an asset of the Council held on one particular trust as a war memorial. You cannot change that name unless you get a declaratory judgment from the Supreme Court or in the neighbouring Act of Parliament. It's true. Our history in Napier is a little confabulated. My great granddad Bill was a military setter uh, from 1960, 1864, who fought at Pukimari and was awarded the New Zealand Medal and was also fighting at Omaranui. He was a signatory to this community becoming a town board. Uh, one of his collateral descendants, Peggy Higgins, served here also as a councillor. Bill lost his son Frederick in World War I. From, we go from there to uh, my mother, who is uh, Bill's granddaughter, and she married Clem Nash, or Clement Walter Nash, who was a solicitor in Napier, and they had three sons, of whom Hal, my oldest brother, also practised as a lawyer in Napier. Uh, Clem's dad was Walter Nash, who by coincidence was a pro, uh, the person who mainly pushed for the funding to have memorials having a community purse. He attended our, oh my God, I have talked too far. I'm In fine. that situation. Go fast. <laughs> oh, go fast. Oh, thank you, dear. In conclusion, Guy's building is iconic. It, it's still the bones of there and it should be held. 
as that building, it should be held as a war memorial. Winston Churchill said that we live in a world where the people own the government, not in a country where the government owns the people. Yeah. Yeah. And if we open a quarrel between the past and the present, we shall find we have no future. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jeremy. So we move on to uh, thank you for everybody that's presented in the uh, forum. Excuse me, did you want to say something? Uh, no, it's not, but we do have a moment. If you would like to present, I'm very happy to listen. Sorry, but it's not on my list. Mr Chairman, um, I received a letter this morning from an RSA veteran that asked me if I could read it out to you today. All war memorials are cultural assets. All deserve to be maintained by their guardians in terms of the New Zealand Charter of Illamos and guidelines of other heritage agencies. There is still time to reinstate the name on the forecourt before Anzac Day, as well as a copy of the names identified for the role of honour displayed at the reception desk for the public to inspect. Can we please ask our guardians of our memorial, the Napier City Council, to set up an appropriate sign before Anzac Day at the entrance of the forecourt? Finally, this is from me, because I close, before I close, I would like it to be noted that contrary to what has been printed in the media, I would like to clarify the position of the Napier RSA, which is that the original name, the Napier War Memorial Centre, be reinstated and that a notice be placed below stating conference, community activity, etc. Thank you for the time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We're just going to take a two-minute break to see if we can get Kirsten wired in. Just don't ask me to help. Good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we need to move on. We've got an enormous agenda today. So we move on to the confirmation minutes. 
uh, confirmation of minutes that the draft minutes of the ordinary council meeting held on Tuesday the 20th of uh, February 2018 be confirmed. Moved by Councillor Bogue, seconded by Councillor Price. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried? Pardon? Just check Kirsten, Are you there, Kirsten? I am. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Um, welcome, Kirsten. And the next item is that the draft minutes of the extraordinary meeting of council held on Friday the 16th of March be confirmed as true. Councillor Taylor, seconded by Councillor Wright. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against, carried. Councillors, because of uh, the interest in the items today, on item uh, three on our agenda, um, I intend taking item three and item one on the um, strategic infrastructure, strategy and infrastructure committee together, because they are one and the same thing. One's an advisory paper on the other. And I propose they combine under item three and that item three becomes item one. All I'm saying is we're simply bringing the discussion on the name of War Memorial forward because there's so much interest in it. So um, I also would like to councillors to suspend standing order 20.1, which allows uh, councillors... 20, standing order 20.1 restricts the council to three, three speakers for and three speakers against, and then the, the, the matter must be put. And I'm saying we should suspend it. Do I have a seconder for that? I'll second that. Councillor Jeffrey, seconded by Councillor Jeffrey. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Yep. Um, and um, and I also need to get a proposer and seconder for moving that order of the items. So, uh, Councillor Haig, Councillor Tarpany, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against carried. Councillors. I would like to move that, a res uh, that, uh, that Resolution A be amended to that Council reinstates the word War Memorial to the currently named Napier Conference Centre and for clarity that name would become the Napier War Memorial Conference Centre. I'll second that. Uh, Seconded by Councillor Jeffrey. Councillors, this has been a very difficult and delicate subject for many in our community. There are those who believe our decision to rename the facility to Napier Conference Centre was not only wrong, it was offensive and showed a lack of respect to those who gave their lives in war. And it was also offensive and disrespectful to those who worked hard to build the original war memorial to honour our fallen. To those people, I unreservedly apologise, and I can assure you there was never ever any intention by this council to be offensive or disrespectful. We all know the history of the conference centre, although clearly there is some confusion over the history of the name. After being converted from a community hall to a conference centre, it was rededicated on the 30th of September 1995. Council information on the internet suggests it was redirected, rededicated as the Napier War Memorial Centre. And the New Zealand Government History Site tells us it was rededicated as the Napier War Memorial Conference Centre. But in year 2000, I'm sorry, but I, I, we've listened to you all. Please show respect to whoever is speaking at the time. In year 2000, the facility was officially branded the Napier War Memorial Conference Centre. That is the name it was known by until 2016 without dissension. And it is the name we're now seeking to restore to the building. When we as a council decided to remove the Roll of Honour or Wall of Remembrance from inside the building to a place more accessible to all, we also named the, renamed the facility the Napier Conference Centre. Of course, that didn't please everybody and a small but very vociferous group sprung up demanding we reinstate the title War Memorial to the facility. And councillors, I think we all agree that it is appropriate that the building is again clearly and correctly described as a War Memorial. However, I contend it makes no sense whatsoever to not have the word conference 
in the headline name of the facility. It would be irresponsible of councillors to spend more than seven million to rate of ratepayers' money creating a top class conference centre and then to brand that centre in a way that industry experts tell us would be an impediment to marketing the facility. Councillors, we need to make a firm decision. Do we want to continue to live in the past or do we acknowledge and show respect for the past whilst looking to a prosperous future? Councillors, RSAs right around the country have long been aware of the need to be commercial. While they all maintained their traditions and respect for those who served, some stayed living in the past and most of them are now gone. Progressive RSAs like Napier have embraced commercialism with their bars, casino and restaurant. That's why they are one of the most successful RSAs in the country. They haven't forgotten their traditions. They haven't left, lost their respect for those who served, particularly those who died. They have simply recognised they need to be commercially viable to be able to continue. The ratepayers of Napier have spent over $7 million converting a no longer fit for purpose conference centre into a state of the art conference centre with a large exhibition hall. Why then would we inflict a name on that facility that makes it difficult to market? A name that simply doesn't fully say what it is. When overseas conference planners are looking for a New Zealand conference venue, what does War, Napier War Memorial Centre tell them? It could be anything. In fact, it conjures up images of a military museum or perhaps a stone obelisk. It certainly doesn't immediately make you think of a modern conference centre. Are those conference planners, councillors, likely to come to Napier? Or do you think that they might choose a venue that describes itself correctly such as the Palmerston North Conference and Function Centre, or perhaps the Marlborough Convention Centre. Can I suggest to you councillors that locally, the DHB has got it right. The Hawke's Bay Fallen Soldiers Memorial Hospital tells us that firstly, it is a memorial to the men and women of Hawke's Bay who made the ultimate sacrifice, and secondly, that it is a hospital. Hastings has also got it right. The Hastings and District War Memorial Library. It would make absolutely no sense to call that facility the Hastings and District War Memorial Centre. It is a war memorial, but it's also a library. The Napier War Memorial Centre in no way suggests that the facility is also a commercial conference centre. Frankly, I cannot understand what the objection is to having the word conference in the facility's name. Putting it in does not detract from the fact that the building is a war memorial. It just tells people exactly what is there. Importantly, it allows the conference centre to be marketed appropriately. We've been told by an independent expert that calling the facility a war memorial can cause some difficulties with marketing. Not even describing it as a conference centre is going to make the task nearly impossible. Oh. Councillors, Mrs Dorothy Pilkington supports the name Napier War Memorial Conference Centre. She tells me the name should acknowledge the conversion to a conference centre in 1995, and as you know, Dorothy has been recognised by the Queen for her heritage, uh, work in heritage matters and is an honorary life member of Heritage New Zealand. So that's pretty strong endorsement indeed. The President of the Napier RSA, who has just presented to us, when talking about his membership on Radio New Zealand, said, and I quote, they want it the Napier War Memorial Centre. I think they will be big enough to accept conference in the name. 
the president of the Teradale RSA wrote to me in July of last year, and in that letter he mentioned the Napier War Memorial Conference Centre on six occasions, and he said this, I can't understand the logic and reasoning for not still calling the whole facility in sight the Napier War Memorial Conference Centre. Councillors, since reopening, the Napier Conference Centre has generated good momentum toward covering operational costs and generating a surplus. That momentum, that level of commercial bookings, and therefore our ability to offer community rates, is at risk, risk if we restrict our ability to effectively market the facility by not calling it a conference centre. Approximately 20% of the bookings at the conference centre are community bookings at a considerably discounted rate. Those bookings are effectively subsidised by the 80% of bookings that pay the commercial rate. Councillors, we have listened to those who want to reinstate the words War Memorial into the name of the Premier Conference Centre in Hawke's Bay, and we've heard how the, in the 1950s the public subscribed thousands of dollars towards the building of a War Memorial. Now, 60 years later, it is a time we acknowledge the silent majority of Napier ratepayers who have recently contributed over $7 million to enable us to market a fit-for-purpose conference centre. The silent majority have every right to expect that their council will do everything possible to ensure that they, the ratepayers, get a return on their investment. And that can't be done if the facility does not have the word conference in its headline title. Conference as part of the official title, not as an add-on, not as a tagline, is part of a descriptive name that respects the past and acknowledges what this facility can do for Hawke's Bay's economic future. Napier War Memorial Conference Centre. If we are not able to market our conference centre appropriately in an extremely competitive marketplace, we are likely to see a significant fall in revenue and therefore a subsequent increase in rates. And councillors, we have no right to inflict that outcome on our rate bars. With extra attention to marketing, a War Memorial Conference Centre could potentially maintain an acceptable market position and continue to serve community interests. Removing the word conference and calling the facility the War Memorial Centre puts both the commercial viability and community accessibility in significant risk. I believe you've spoken for your 10 minutes. No, I haven't. My, my speech is being timed. Timing. Councillors, the call is yours. You know clearly where I stand on the matter. I believe we owe it to the ratepayers of Napier to have con who have contributed over $7 million to enable us, us to have this excellent commercial conference centre to market in the best way possible, and that means giving the facility an appropriate name, the Napier War Memorial Conference Centre. We have answered the call by those who wanted the War Memorial name reintroduced. Let us now answer the call of those who want to see our conference centre a commercial success. A commercial success not just for the facility, not just for the council, but a commercial success all for our hospitality sector, our transport sector, our tourism operators, and in fact the whole of the Hawke's Bay region. Thank you. Are you there still? Next, yep, you can speak next, Kirsten, if you wish. Now, have, Thank you very much. Have we got a way of getting this on the speaker or something? So people can hear what she's going to say? No, just put that down. Where you go? Uh, oh, hello, everybody. This isn't ideal circumstances, obviously, having to speak a phone in from um, the other side of the world. Um, I am speaking against the motion currently on the table um, is the, the centre is much more than just a conference centre. Yes, this, this is one of the primary and the primary commercial activity undertaken within the centre. 
and nobody denies that and nobody is suggesting that this should change. Nobody is denying the huge economic value that the conference facilities that are held in the War Memorial Centre bring to Hawke's Bay and subsidise the community use of the facility and our host community for a number of different activities. However, first and foremost, it is a war memorial built to honour our fallen soldiers, and the name must reflect that. It is a community facility used for weddings, funerals, school balls, charity events, and the list goes on and on. It is not purely a conference facility, and the name must recognise all of the elements and the activities that are undertaken within it. Yes, we do need to move with the times, and... Um, Bill, well, yes, I, I completely agree. The RSAs have done this and they have survived. The ones that have survived, it's because they've embraced the commercial aspect that will allow them to gain an economic benefit from them. However, they haven't changed their name. It is still the Nature RSA or the Paradell RSA. It is not the Nature RSA bar and grill. So, well... What we're talking about here is, is recognising the true value of the name of the building. I had a, a conversation with Peter Grant from the Taradale RSA just today, and yes, it is true. Um, a number of months ago, he was quite happy for conference to be included in the name. That has now changed, and he is in 100% support of the recommendations that I have put forward. And he has been communicated that he's more than happy for me to hear that in this meeting today. I also find it interesting that you, you can, there's a continuous um, thought that there, that there is a silent minority. There's been a number of polls on social media recently, and they've all clearly indicated that there's a three to one a majority in favour of the name the Nature War Memorial Centre. I also struggle with the advice that's been given by by the one industry expert that we've consulted with, because I personally have spoken to a number of different um, web designers and marketing people who have assured me that the absence of conference in the building name will not have any negative impact whatsoever on the marketability of the centre for commercial conference purposes. I personally have spent several hours searching the web for conference facilities throughout the whole of New Zealand and Australia, and 95% of the facilities that have appeared in my web searches have not had conference in the name. A good example of this is our very own Hawke's Bay Opera House, which appears as the conference facility Hastings. And of course we have the Fonganui War Memorial Centre which removed conference and convention from its name several years ago and their usage and bookings have increased year on year ever since. I, I'll leave it there because I've spoken at length um, in our other meeting and, and I, um, I think you know, I've, I've covered off the points I wanted to say to cover. But I would just like um, to indicate that I am intending to foreshadow if this motion is lost, uh, and I will be moving that uh, through the BNC be debated. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kirsten. Um, <laughs> Councillor Zeno, speakers. Sorry. All right. This one go. All right, so councillors, any other speakers? Councillor White. Um, I also wish to speak against the motion. Uh, today the word that comes to mind is courage. Because I hugely respect our local businesses, our local tourism operators, and all our staff at Nature City Council who run the facilities that we work out of. But today, courage is required to stand up for what you believe is right. When you know the history of this site, you cannot breach again the contract that was made in 1957 with the people of Napier and central government. That contract said 
Napier City Council would be the guardians and preserve the war memorial in perpetuity as a community facility so they might have a lasting and living memorial to those who lost their lives in World War II. For me, I cannot ignore that history. To do so is to betray the very trust of the people of New Zealand back in 19, uh, the people of Napier back in 1957 put us in. I have a moral duty to our community not to turn my back on the fact that the building needs to stand proudly again as a war memorial site, with the name War Memorial Centre on it, not something with a commercial tagline attached to it. The War Memorial name honours the origins of the site, restores its mana, and respects the reasons why it was built by the people of Napier in 1957. And the word centre indicates its important multi-use as a community and commercial facility. It's interesting to note, and it's, and it's interesting that back in 2002 and, and up until 2016, we did have the name Conference Centre in it. But although the public might not have been aware that the Napier City Conference Centre was suffering an identity uh, uh, crisis in today's highly competitive market, the name was considered to sound like an RSA, and the name itself was alienating potential clients. So why would you revert back to a commercial name that was deemed to be unsuitable? I absolutely support the commercial activity within the War Memorial Centre, which is the Napier Conference Centre, and totally appreciate the importance this activity means to our local business businesses and tourism business. I support the word conference needs to be at the forefront of our branding and marketing of the facility. It makes economic sense to do so. The conference centre needs to continue to operate business as usual and this covers both the community and, and commercial facilities. These activities are important with approximately 80% of the time being used by commercial users who subsidise 20% of community usage. In today's market, we've all come a long way in social media and to, I can put in ears and find out a whole lot of things. I can Google anything and, if it, and today, the savvy people in marketing, if they cannot put Napier conference venues, I would have to wonder why they are there because, because Everyone does uh, Google searches. So we don't need conference in the name to make sure that our Napier Conference Centre goes forward into the future as a vibrant, iconic uh, business activity. So the Pullman Hotel, Sky City, Emporium, Hawke's Bay Opera House are all buildings. They all have conference facilities within them. How did I found out, find out? I Googled it. Need, need I say more? I leave my argument. And so when the motion is lost, I will um, talk more about the other motions being put forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Any other councillors? Don't forget we've suspended 20.1, so anybody can speak? Councillor Tarpany? Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> I'll try making an effort not to repeat any points which have been previously brought to the table. Over the time that this particular agenda item has been passing through Council, and I'm cognizant of the fact that I wasn't involved in some of those earlier decisions, as were some of our other councillors who were also not involved. Um, what I've been looking for as I've been going through some of the historical papers related to this is confidence around how we've been able to ensure that uh, any changes that we make to a memorial um, have met necessary legislative requirements as mentioned in not only in today's submissions but previous submissions. I read through the paperwork which was provided to Council today and I'm grateful to the staff in the way that they have highlighted the various decisions over time and uh, the reasonings behind why those decisions were brought to Council and why Council made certain decisions around changes to the intent and purpose of that building. Uh, the confidence that I was seeking around ensuring that we weren't in breach of any other legal requirements, I was unable to find. 
So my position has unchanged with regards to um, this motion. I'm still not in support of a name change to uh, in any fashion. I've been unable to determine a motion as such, even within the current papers, which clearly state that Council had passed a motion um, uh, changing the name of the building. So from my research, I still see the name standing as the War Memorial Centre. Um, the other, with regards to some of the science which has been put forward to Council around the reasons uh, for including the name Conference Centre, while I am appreciative and completely understand the economic drivers which have been presented by our various businesses, especially in tourism and our accommodation providers within Napier, your points are valid. Um, however, I still haven't found confidence for myself, not only within uh, those statements, but there's also more room for um, better science in our papers around quantifying these significant risks that they um, mention uh, in the report with regards to including the name conference and how that may or may not impinge upon a tourism market of some $550 million nationally. Um, I'm still foremost concerned around uh, the primary role of guardianship of Council's assets, which include not only our infrastructure for running water, roads, etc., but also the memorials placed in our care. I am cognizant that in 1931, during the earthquake, the destruction which fell upon our city, there was no question about what needed to be rebuilt. I'm concerned that this memorial in particular is not at threat of being felled in a single event such as an earthquake, but in fact has been slowly eroded away over time, which I see as a derelict of our duty as guardians of the assets placed in our care. The $7.1 million which has been referred to frequently in today's conversations and previously, my understanding based on the information presented to me, that this represents a significant investment in the improvement of a facility which was in need of desperate repair in order to maintain its commercial viability going into the future. As a part of that was looking at what activities might happen in that building to ensure that the cost of $7.1 million could be regained in the interests of the city over time. I think and I'd like to thank those councillors and council for the $7.1 million investment into our memorial. It is great to see that a new memorial can be adapted to cater for new commercial activities within its space. But I want to make absolutely clear that from my perspective I, am, I have still not found confidence with any, within any of the information provided to me that would lend me to support a motion changing the name. As far as the indifference and statements in the reports and comments made on the table around uh, when you walk amongst our community and you ask people uh, what relevance does War Memorial have, the answer itself, um, which would, if you're asking the younger generation, those perhaps who don't wear red poppies or are not members of the um, RSA, you may get the impression that the War Memorial doesn't hold such a high importance for them. For me that sends two signals to our council. One, it reinforces our role as guardians, that we need to be proactive in this space in protecting the memory of those who have gone before, whether for this memorial or others, including the likes of Mayor Swan. So I am against the motion as it sits on the table at the moment uh, for those reasons with the, um, and noting that the supporting evidence provided in all of, in, in the examples that I read where we canvassed commercial conference operators, all of them said they started their search on the internet with the words conference and Napier. So regardless of what we name the building, wherever you sit in the world, when you do a search for conference of Napier, you will get a full list of our facilities, including the War Memorial Centre. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Mr. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> Are there any other speakers? Anyone else wish to speak? Councillor Brussel. Um, I'm speaking in support of what I think is a foreshadowed motion by Councillor Wise, um, which is to support the original decision of the committee, um, Councillor Price's committee decision. No, you need to speak to that at the time. We're, we're, there's a motion on the table which we'll we do. need to... Yeah. I'm speaking against the motion on the table. Thank you. 
Um, I would like to set the scene to my speaking against this motion um, and, and as you all know I'm quite procedural in the way that I look at um, our, our committee meetings and our meetings. Um, so I'd like to set the scene that saying, by saying that before the first committee paper was prepared, staff were aware that some councillors around this table held a different view to their recommendation um, of including conferences in the name. If staff and councillors felt that there were risk factors in us making a different decision, that paper, the paper that went to committee, was the place to set out the options and risks to this council, such as economic and reputational. This was not done. Instead, in my view, questionable additional information in this paper was a late addition and furthers only one position. Council did not request a risk assessment of its decision. However, it has been commissioned, purely, in my view, to undermine that original committee decision. The additional economic and risk information in this paper and the accommodation providers stakeholder meeting that was called, which followed with lobbying of councillors, is nothing more than a transparent, poorly orchestrated and deliberate attempt at undermining the original decision. Councillor Brosnan, you are actually not speaking for or against the motion. You're talking about procedural stuff which I believe are irrelevant to the motion that's on the table. I'm speaking to the content of the paper. But that's not what is being debated. Yes it is. This is the paper you've put a motion towards. No, the, 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 Would the Chief Executive like to speak for himself? Or? Well yeah, perhaps you'd like to uh, explain it. Um, through you uh, Mr Mayor. Um, the point is that you're supposed to be speaking to the motion which is on the table. What you're speaking to is a procedural issue which is actually not the motion. I'm speaking to the content of the paper to yeah. which so the motion paper, has So been the made. paper which you are discussing is item three, item one sorry, on the strategy and infrastructure one which has been moved forward. The other one was a background paper so you need to speak to the motion. I'll carry on and you can pull me up if you think I stray into that any further Mr Chair. I will. <laughs> Maybe I'll skip that paragraph. Um, I value double debating, but not when it's used to get one way no matter what. Um, I believe it is business as usual at the Napier Conference Centre, and I do not accept that any additional cost will be become to ratepayers if it is called the War Memorial Centre. That is, it is a business unit. It's run out of a building on a site. That is the War Memorial Centre, that site. Google is smarter than a building name. This site is a War Memorial, not a conference centre. The conference centre is a business within it. Yeah. To that end, referring to the content of the paper, I don't buy it, I won't be manipulated, and if I was unclear, I speak against. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to put up and get hammered? I, I'm game. You're, I'm game. You're good to game, Mr. <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> Look, at no time in my uh, council career is, uh, has the uh, value of double debating been more uh, amply demonstrated than today. And as you know, at the committee meeting, I, particularly uh, my personal view, was that the word conference was included and I explained quite clearly why, but I said I wasn't going to die in a ditch over it, and I don't propose to do that today. But there are very good reasons why the word conference should be included. Now, for a start, we've told a lot about the so-called search engines. Well, well, I've uh, come from a commercial environment, and there's more than search uh, engines in commerce, there's walk by. Now, one of my jobs uh, during my working life, I was a director of a, a national organisation that had 300 uh, different businesses and they rented conference facilities. Our CEO came here for another matter, walked along Marine Parade and saw the clear branding Napier War Memorial Conference Centre and he said I did, he didn't realise there was a waterfront location and booked it for the, for the next conference. So don't get too carried away with uh, with search engines, there are other there is other motivation, uh, you know, for for booking uh, for booking venues. Now, during the uh, why I refer to the double debate during the committee meeting and this meeting, 
I've had an avalanche of uh, correspondence over this, and varying, you know, varying opinions, but one constant was that the pr primacy of the war wall must remain. That was non-negotiable, that just had to be there. But more people uh, supported the word conference uh, that, than re remaining than being you know, removed. So there, there is support out in our community to call it the War Memorial Conference Centre. There's no two ways about it. I'm still not going to die in a ditch over it. <laughs> um, now my, my, my uh, late father was a returned serviceman, saw active service in the Pacific. My only uncle um, died in action, uh, you know, was killed in action. The, the men that returned, and I was brought up with these men, they were pragmatic men and they got down and they, they worked and they built modern Napier. There's no two ways about it. In 1995, most of these men were alive. In 1995, there was public consultation to change the very purpose from the trustees into a commercial um, organisation. 85% of their business done through the conference centre is, is commercial. Only 15% is committee. Sure, we could have quotas, but the more we reduce the commercial content, the less funding we've got for community. Um, now, that, now these men, if they're alive today, in 1995 there wasn't a whimper from these men when it changed to commercial activity. In 2001, under the lates, it was branded the Warm World Conference Centre. It's quite clear in, in Napier history. It was, it was branded. But the primacy of the site remained. The foundation stone saying, saying uh, War Memorial Centre remained. Mr Titter still has that stone. There's no reason why the stone can't be there to recognise primacy of the site. But the branding of the building in the commercial world should be Napier War Memorial Conference Centre. If my late father was alive and my brother, you know, my late uncle wasn't killed, they'd support that because they, they, were, they were progressive men. They respected the past, lived in the present, but they worked their guts out for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jeffrey. Any other speakers? Councillor Taylor. Yes, I'm, uh, like Councillor Geoffrey, I'm going to support the <coughs> motion that the Mayor has put. And I'm, I'll try not to go over some of the points, but I'll try and raise some others that seem to have been either left out for various reasons. But firstly, I don't think there's any debate. War Memorial must go back into the name. The contentious issue, obviously, is whether it's centre <coughs> or conference centre. And I believe that the word centre does not define what the venue offers. Historically, and we can say that may, history may only have been since 2015, 2000, that it has been a conference centre, and more recently, since the major investment, it has been a state-of-the-art conference centre. Some other municipal venture, uh, venues around New Zealand that offer conference f facilities don't have conference in their name. However, they were designed specifically as multi-purpose venues for additional things like performing arts, and I refer to the Aotea Centre and the Michael Fowler Centre. From May 2015, when a seismic assessment focused our attention on this venue, we have travelled down a path towards establishment of a state-of-the-art conference centre, and we made a decision in June 2016, following a comprehensive business case having been produced, tested and put before us that it was time to strengthen the building, was one, and make a fit for purpose conference facility with a trade exhibition space. That came before us and some may recall that I actually spoke against it as I felt that I did not think Napier would support a conference centre of that size. I have been proved wrong. If we did not make a commercial activity of the primary focus, but rather a community use of the venue, venue, then we should have had that debate then, before we invested in making a major investment and producing a conference centre, a state of the art. Only when the words War Memorial were removed and the elements of the role of honour and perpetual flame moved off site, did we actually start to examine the purpose of the venue. Nothing before, as Councillor Jeffrey said. We have had cited many times, and again today, as, and as recently as this morning, the fact that the Wanganui District Council changed the name of their convention and conference centre. And quoting the Mayor of the time, Annette Main, she stated, it remains the War Memorial Hall, but we agreed to use the word centre as it reflects its ability to be used and marketed for events. 
But when former Mayor Main was asked, where, were there any issues with advertising brand and role recognition given conference was not included in the latest name, she replied, and I quote, no, in my opinion, it more accurately describes the venue, creates less confusion and the potential for criticism from those seeking a conference centre with all the technology and breakout rooms. She was clearly stating that the Wanganui War Memorial Centre did not provide all technology and breakout rooms expected of a conference centre and thus they should not advertise it as such. Is that what we want? Potential clients think our conference centre does not have all the technology and breakout rooms? We want the opposite. We want potential clients to know that they can expect and have a state-of-the-art conference centre. Restore the name, the War Memorial, Napier War Memorial Conference Centre, restore the elements of the role of honour and flame to the site. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Haig. Mr Chair, it's been great to hear the debate today because I think the diverse views around the table probably reflect the very diverse views that are in the community on this very issue. I think our role as councillors is to listen to and reflect our community and the fact that we are in disagreement today, I believe, shows that we're doing exactly that. Our role also, though, is to make our own decisions and have a courage to make those decisions. The Deputy Mayor has talked of courage today and has said that a courageous decision would be to go with War Memorial Centre. Um, for myself, my courageous decision, and that it's certainly putting my head above the parapet, I do realise that, is that I would like to see Napier War Memorial Conference Centre be the name. The reason for that is that I have a vision for Napier as a mature community that can tolerate diverse views, that can listen to each other, that can change their minds when necessary, and that can recognise that the decisions that we need to make need to balance history, present and future, and that's often really hard. It's easy to say one thing's good and one thing's bad, and it's easy to say that commerce is evil and memorials are great, but actually trying to balance up those things and hold them together in tension, I believe is the sign of a really mature society, and that's the Napier I'd love to be part of in the future. So for that reason, and taking into account all of the great discussion I've heard so far today, I would support the current motion on the table that the name of the building be the Napier War Memorial Conference Centre. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Councillor McGrath. Through the Chair, just to state that I don't support it really. And uh, just, just in doing some searches, we have, Napier has another um, venue, Napier City Council has another venue that it uh, advertises as a conference facility. And will we, will we be looking at changing the name to that also and adding conference to it? I don't know what you're talking about, so uh, I, can't, I can't answer. Kennedy, Kennedy Park Resort advertises itself as a conference centre and doesn't have conference in the name. The resort. Anybody else would like to speak on the motion before I put the motion? Um, uh, Mr. Councillor Dallymore. Thank you. Um, I, I would uh, speak in support of the motion um, and put my head above um, the parapet. Um, of my dad was the past president of the RSA. I'm sure he would um, support uh, what I've uh, what I've come up with. But um, the sorry, of, um, I don't want to go through and re uh, repeat everything that's been said here. But I did a couple of surveys. I did surveys at, uh, amongst the residents at. Um, Thanks. I did a survey uh, locally in West Shore um, when I dropped off some uh, pamphlets. Um, I've spoken to everybody on the committee at the uh, West Shore Residents Association. Um, I analysed a social media poll and uh, 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 found a result from that. Um, and I found a lot of people that had uh, voted uh, 
we're, we're either living out of town or uh, overseas. Um, the 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 uh, end of it is is that uh, everyone that I spoke to, the, uh, there was overwhelming support to uh, uh, have it uh, as the Napier or Memorial Conference Centre. It really gets down to how much matters it to me uh, to uh, to me as a councillor. Um, when I'm representing these people, that's, the, that's what they've told me they want. Um, it really comes down to less about what I think. I'm representing them, I'm representing their choice, and that's why I support the motion. Thank you. Councillor Price. Right. Um, <coughs> I haven't had the opportunity to vote on this because I chaired the last meeting and it was, um, I didn't, it wasn't required to vote. So. Uh, so Certainly didn't today. need your casting vote, <laughs> Councillor Price. <laughs> no, that, that was a bit of a worry that day, but um, um, this has been a very difficult, very difficult um, um, decision to make. It's um, probably had a few sleepless nights trying to um, to decide which way I was going to go on this. But I um, I got the strong view is that the War Memorial should go back into the um, the naming of it. But I also have the strong view that conference has to be in there somewhere. I, um, I've spoken to some people that have um, been businessmen in Australia, and um, and they say, thank you. Um, and they say that um, you need to have conference in the name when you're advertising a war memorial for conferences in Australia. And I had a few people say that because the perhaps the confusion. Hey, listen, you can have a talk afterwards. Just let me go. Perhaps the um, the decision that conference should be in um, is one that is a marketing ploy for us. The second thing is, is I was involved uh, with the um, paper when we decided that it had earthquake issues and then we made a decision to put more money in to upmarket it as a conference centre. At that time nobody came forward and told us that we shouldn't be doing that. And you know we spent 7.1 million whereas contrary to what was said, we could have spent a lot less and just refurbished the war memorial so it was earthquake proof. So a decision was made to go ahead with it as an upmarket conference centre for about 300 approximately people. I remember uh, Neil Fergus was employed by the council then and I've spoken to him because he was very involved in that um, paper. He wasn't, um, he, he didn't want to come and talk but he was quite happy that I uh, quoted him and his view was that conference should stay in the name. So um, I'm speaking in favour of the uh, motion just in case you haven't worked it out. Thank you. Are there anybody, any other councillors who wish to speak before I have my right of reply? There's not. Could I, in taking my right of reply, can I just caution people about putting any belief in polls that have run on Facebook and things like that. Any one of us that's been involved in Facebook, uh, in, in, in politics, knows that they're absolutely able to be manipulative. Anybody that's got half a brain with a computer can set it up and have it you know, throwing in votes <coughs> for as long as they like, and I've seen it done. Promise you I'd never do it myself. Um, <laughs> Councillors, look, for almost 40 years, the people of Napier enjoyed what everyone called the War Memorial Hall. It was an outstanding community hall. But in the last few years of its life, the War Memorial Hall became tired and run down. The eternal flame had been out for years. And it's interesting that the same people who have made such, so much noise about not letting the flame go out during renovations, and the same people, people who now want to remove conference from the name of the facility was strangely silent at that time. But in 1995, the council decided to convert what was then a tired old hall into a conference centre. And in 2000, well before any of us were sitting around this table, the facility was branded the, War Memor the Napier War Memorial Conference Centre. And the name was accepted by all. I don't recall any opposition at the time or during the next 16 years. There was no opposition. It just chugged along. And it's that name, the Napier War Memorial Conference Centre, that we seek to have reinstated 
to the facility. I simply can't understand why anyone could object to the premier conference, conference centre in Hawke's Bay having the word conference in its masthead branding. Councillors, we're told that the whole site is a war memorial and it's absolutely clear that the Napier Conference Centre sits on the site. So therefore, simple logic tells us that the facility is the Napier War Memorial Conference Centre and it should be called just that. So that's my right of reply. So you're all well aware I will now go to a vote. All those in favour of the... Oh, we, we will do this by division. We'll do the vote by division. So can I have all of those in favour of the amendment on the table to please raise their right hand? Can you just read it to us again? Just read it. The... I move, I've moved that resolution A be amended to that council reinstates the words war memorial to the currently named Con Napier Conference Centre. For clarity, the name would become Napier War Memorial Conference Centre. All right? So all of those in favour of the motion, please raise your right hand. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Against? One, two... Again. <laughs> Couldn't have guessed. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that right? Are you all happy with the count? Yep. I'm aware of it. So it's seven against, six, four. All right? No, that's right. That's right. Seven against the amendment. Six for the amendment. So the amendment is lost. All right. <laughs> Councillor Wise, you have um, uh, said that you would like to put another uh, motion or another amendment. Yes, that's correct. Can I just ask? That's correct. Just, I've just, just give us two texts, Kirsten. Can I ask procedurally? Whether we have to, we can accept that, or whether we have to. Well, at the moment we've got no motion on the table. This is a substantive right. motion. Substitute motion. So it, it becomes a substitute motion. Right. That's correct. I'm wishing to put forward a substantive motion, which is actually just adding a B and C to the motion which has just been voted on. Yeah. No. 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 We just voted on an amendment. The, the, the original motion has not been put to the meeting. Um, through, through you, um, Mr Chair. So, Councillor, so the issue that we have at the moment is there's no motion on the table, so what you need to do um, is you either move the motion which is um, in the agenda and then you can move an amendment to that motion. Or you can move, or you your move it as a substitute. Or you yeah. move your motion as a substitute for, motion. Look, for simplicity, the answer is to move it as a substitute motion. That that makes it more simple. Exactly. That, that's All right, what, so that's it becomes... What I'm in, it's not a substantial exactly. motion, it's a substitute yeah. motion. Yeah. Just seeing we're all being PC around here at the moment. All right, where you go. Very good. So you've moved it. It's been seconded so, by... by you know, what is the Oh, what is, what, what is the motion? No one cared what it is yet. Oh. Oh. So, oh, Councillor Wise has got it. So I'm wishing uh, to add two points. The first being that the Napier Conference Centre is recognised as a key business activity within the War Memorial Centre. It's Center. a substitute motion, so you have to give us the whole motion. You can't so, just add to one that's not on the table. Can I... Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor, suggestion would be if you're wanting to add that, that you have, that you move the current motion, and then you do an amendment to add those other points in. So at least you've got a motion on the table. It sounds My like apologies. This is very difficult to do via phone. Yeah. So move the move the motion that is that came through the um, strategy committee. So just just and that puts a motion on the table. And then we can take an amendment. So just for clarity. Very good. So I've moved the motion. Yes. So just I've for clarity. I've moved the motion that came. Yes. Yep. So and seconded by Councillor Brosnan. 
This is the motion from the from the original. Oh, wait, I'm oh, seconded by Councillor White. Right. So we've we've got a, a mover and a seconder, and now you're 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 proposing an amendment to it. That's correct. Yep. There and my go. amendment is the re the retention of the, the two key points that we had already moved in this motion, and the addition of two further recommendations. The first being that the Napier Conference Centre is recognised as a key business activity within the War Memorial Centre. And the second being that Napier City Council develop a policy for the ongoing management of the War Memorial Centre to protect the site's heritage and recognise the important commemorative elements and the community use of the facility. Um, point, for, of, point for, of order, just, yeah. well, would you be able to clarify please, Mr Mayor or Councillor Wise, just what's the actual motion? Well, I was going to say, Councillor White, you've got the whole motion. Now, just, just the, it's the difficulty with distance. You, if you've got the whole, the whole thing, can you just can you read it to us? It up would be great. I haven't got three correctly down. So just, so just um, following what Councillor Wise um, has got, so you've got the first two points under the motion and the, on your agenda. What page? Sorry. On page 71. Okay. Thank oh. you. Yeah. And that is that the War Memorial to be currently named Napier Conference Centre, the name becoming Napier War Memorial Centre, and B, resolve the building, branding, including signage, forms part of the War Memorial design concepts being brought to council later this year. The next bullet point, which will be C, uh, is that the Napier Conference Centre is recognised as the key activity within the War Memorial Centre. And D, which is slightly, I've got, what I've got written is slightly different and I think Councillor Wise probably needs to give me the correct wording. What's the correct wording for D, for your last point, please, Councillor Wise? Uh, just the, that Napier City Council develop a policy for the ongoing management of the War Memorial Centre to protect the site's heritage and recognise the commemorative elements and community use of the facility. Right, so we know we've got a, we've, we've got a, a, a mover and a seconder. Is there any discussion of the motion? Can I ask a question? Yes. So maybe um, Kirsten, Councillor Rice can answer this. So this has no effect on marketing the, the conference side of things separately to the War Memorial as it is at the moment? Did you hear is the question? Is this a question to me? Yes. 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 Yeah. No, absolutely not. I, as I've stated on numerous occasions, I have absolutely no intention to remove the commercial activity which is undertaken there and I fully support the ongoing marketing of the conference facilities which are offered out of the War Memorial Centre. Thank you, that clarifies it for me. If I could ask a question, uh, Councillor Wise, so do you envisage the, the um, conferences to be marketed under the name of the Napier Conference Centre or under the name of the War Memorial Centre? I don't believe that that is a decision or call that I can be responsible for making tonight. I think that it is a joint, uh, in my personal opinion, which obviously is, is not something that can be used uh, to go forward, I think that absolutely the Napier Conference Centre brand will continue and the important part of it is to have the connection to the War Memorial site. But we certainly don't have to uh, remove the Napier Conference Centre branding in any way. So in terms of marketing, just for, just for clarity so we know what we're talking about, in terms of marketing the facility, if we're out trying to market the facility to attract conferences, what brand would we market under? Again, I think I'm being put in a very unfair position to, to discuss this at this meeting. Uh, we've got under point B, 
that the branding and marketing will be brought back to council in June uh, when the design concept for the War Memorial come back to us and I don't feel that it is fair to actually be asking me at this point in time uh, how that marketing will work. Just thought it through. Yeah. All right, is there any other comments around the table? Yeah. Councillor Jeffrey. Well, I'd just like clarity from Councillor Wise. Am I speaking loud enough, Kirsten? Can you hear Tony, um, Kirsten? I'd just like clarity yeah. that your motion doesn't exclude sub-branding for the commercial operations of the, of the, uh, of the venue. Absolutely not. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's the Rosner. Um, <coughs> Councillor Wise, can I ask a question of your motion? In A, it's stating reinstate the words Napier Conference Centre, um, to, fr sorry, from Napier Conference Centre to Napier War Memorial Centre. Is that your intention or is it War Memorial Centre? Is the Napier at the front, I suppose I'm asking? The original motion had included Napier in it. Yep. And from my perspective, whether we actually formally call it Napier War Memorial Centre or War Memorial Centre is probably irrelevant because we could choose to drop the Napier from any signage or any any particular branding if we wanted to. So I think we need to be clear, Councillor Wise, we need to be clear what your motion is, though. It's, it's either Napier War Memorial Centre or it's War Memorial Centre. We, we need to be clear what your well, the original is. motion. The original motion was Nature War Memorial Centre. Yeah. So you're happy to go with that? Yes. Oh, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Mm -hmm. No other comments, councillors? Sorry, just one, and it may seem, um, I realise that we're, time is dragging on, but with regards to point D, councillor Wise, um, the memorial centre to protect the site's heritage and recognise the commemorative elements. Did you want to separate those two? Are we looking to protect only the War Memorial Centre and, and by differentiation recognise the elements separately? Or are we looking to protect them all? I'm just seeking to remove the word and in uh, option D. In other words, I'm wondering whether or not... Um, I'm happy for the word and to be removed if, if there is an appetite for that. Change to recognising. Well, yeah, what I was seeking is whether or not what we're after is to protect both the memorial site and the commemorative elements, yeah. rather than differentiating I, them. I, yeah. When I refer to the commemorative elements, I'm not actually specifically making reference to, for example, uh, the perpetual flame or the roll of honour. I'm actually just talking in a broader sense of around the whole site and the fact that oh. the whole site has a, a commemorative element to it. So if, if that helps to um, make it clarify the situation. Thank you. All right, any other questions, comments? I've just got a comment. Yep. I'd just like to say that um, my w initial wishes were to, for the conference, War Memorial to be there and conference to be in there. And the answer that Councillor Wise has given, that um, it can be marketed basically on a separate separate label as a conference centre, uh, fulfils um, what my aim was with it. Thank you. Councillor McGrath. Yes, um, I fully support the amended motion. And, and uh, I'd also like if everyone at some stage gets an opportunity to read Kirsten's talking point this morning. If you haven't, it is very good and speaks for, for some of us quite nicely. I fully support what she has written and I'd like to thank the people of Napier who have stood up and fought for what is right in their community. As a council, we were asked by the community to return the name and the flame. <coughs> Today, hopefully, we will return the name. Now, there is a lot of confusion going around with regards to a business activity that works out of there and the name of the site and the facility. For me, the two don't necessarily need to be linked. In the past, we had, I think it was the Hawke's Bay Aquarium Trust 
that worked out of the bottom very successfully, did not have the name War Memorial in it. Laron Restaurant worked very well without it in. I think we've all got confused and, and wound right into this, which is very understandable, and we need to separate out the business that works from there and the War Memorial site. I think this achieves that. That's all I have to say. So, Councillor McGrath, could I ask you a question? Is it your understanding that we can still market the Napier Conference Centre out of the building that's known as the War Memorial Centre? Absolutely. But that is something that can be worked through further down the line. But currently I don't see an, an issue with that. Councillor Jeffrey. Well, the, uh, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Well, the, the Ronde was always uh, marketed as the Ronde and the Aquarium was always marketed as the Aquarium, and I'm happy with, uh, uh, you know, with Kirsten's uh, answer to my question and uh, the activities within the building, long as they can be branded under the uh, Napier Conference Centre and the flags. I wanted the flagstone uh, reinstated anyway. That was something pretty dear to me, so that was non-negotiable. So I'm happy to support the uh, yeah, to support. Councillor Haig. Mr Mayor, while as you know my preference was for the Napier War Memorial Centre, I'm really pleased to see the addition of C in this amended motion. Con I think you mean conference centre. Sorry, con yeah, conference centre, thank you. Um, that the Napier Conference Centre is recognised as a key activity within the War Memorial Centre. I think some of the unease we've got around the table is to be able to give some certainty to the conference centre and to the staff going forward um, in order to ensure that they can make plans strategize, um, bring in business and remembering that business actually supports community activity by allowing us to subsidize it. So I'm prepared to support this um, because I do believe it's a reasonable compromise but I would like us not to fall into the trap of unsettling um, at the commercial activity, the conference activity, because it's really important that that business has some certainty going forward. So if we can balance those two things, then I would certainly be supportive of Councillor Wise's efforts here. And I don't know if you would have a, have a comment on that, Councillor Wise. Did you? Uh, no. Uh, fully accepting and, and appreciative of, of what you've said. I, I will um, have a right of reply when everybody has finished speaking. Bye -bye. Can, can I ask you a question, Councillor Wise? C says that the Napier Conference Centre is recognised as a key activity within the War Memorial Centre. Would you accept something that was more specific that said something along the lines that the Napier Conference Centre can be marketed from the War Memorial Centre. Interesting that you say that, Mr Mayor, because the original recommendation that I had proposed earlier this week was that the Napier Conference Centre uh, will be branded as the key, a key business activity within the War Memorial Centre. So I absolutely have no issue with that whatsoever. Any other questions? So, if I moved an amendment to your amendment, <laughs> that 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 C becomes that the Napier Conference Centre is marketed from within the War Memorial Centre. The Napier War Memorial Centre. No, it was already says that. I would be happy that the Napier Conference Centre is recognised and marketed as a key business activity within the War Memorial Centre. Hang on, I'll second that as a seconder. To make sure it's within the Napier War Memorial I'll second yeah, that. Right. All right, that's seconded by Deputy Mayor, so that's agreement. So can we so change that? Can I, can you please just make it that the Napier Conference Centre is recognised and, and marketed, marketed as, a, as a key activity within the War Memorial... Within the Napier War Memorial Centre. Within the Napier War Memorial Centre. Mayor, can, I right. speak? can I speak? Councillor White. Um, I'd just like to say 
I don't believe whatever side of the fence that you've, you sit on, that we want staff fearing for their jobs or feeling uncomfortable that, that we have a mindset that we um, want to take away their, their roles and, and what they're doing really well at present. And I think that's really important today is that we are not trying to retrench their jobs, we're trying to go forward. And one of the things that I think that today is we resolved with um, while the Napier War Memorial um, Centre and the Napier Conference Centre are two separate identities, they also are intrinsically linked. The building and the site respects and honours our past and the Napier Conference Centres which has a commercial co uh, community focus enables the building's ongoing future and also would ensure that we move confidently forward together. So I think I think there's a lot of fear that's come in. I, th I think we're doing we've done the right thing today, and I really honestly believe that the Napier Conference Centre will be an iconic and recognised worldwide uh, as a, as a place to be. And I, I, I think the fears are going to go away. Two weeks' time, I'm hoping all those fears go away. Thank you. And we lived happily ever after, Councillor yeah. White. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right, so there's no further discussion to the motion. I'll put the motion. All those in favour... Sorry? So what you're doing is you're putting the amendment. I'm oh, putting the amendment, sorry. We're doing the amendment first. Put the amendment. So that's um, uh, so this is the amendment to the amendment. So this is so what you're doing uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So through you, Mr. Mayor, you're voting at the moment on the amendment, which is C and D. Yep. Yep. So all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against carried. Aye. Oh, you've voted too, Kirsten. And and now we now move back to the substantive motion, which we've amended. Which is all that. All those in favour, please. Oh no, we've got a move from. Yeah, you've already had a move. Yeah, we've had a move. Yeah. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against. Aye. <laughs> was a late time, time, time lag. <laughs> the motion is carried. Can I just say that we will have a minute's break so that if anybody that's only come along for that item uh, wants to go, you can.
brief. Is it, you've done yeah. enough. You have to stand up. Stand. No, there is another chair. Don't worry. Thank you. You all know. You all know um, the Hawks Bay Airport Limited team. So, um, Tony, it's up to you. Uh, thanks very much, Your Worship. Um, first of all, an apology from Stuart, our new CEO. Uh, he's up in uh, Auckland negotiating with uh, Air New Zealand over landing fees. And if I can't think of a more important duty for him than that one. Did you um, send an interpreter with him? Uh, <laughs> well, yes, just to translate from Scottish. But we've got our uh, own personal uh, uh, translator here. Um, we're going to break it into two. Sarah will present uh, quickly present the uh, half yearly result, and I'll do the statement of intent. The only thing I wanted to do before handing over to Sarah was just to acknowledge the effort the guys out at the airport had made with, uh, in, with the tragic loss of Nick and then uh, with the problems with health of other members of staff and, and really uh, the fact that the report that we're giving uh, for the first half of the year is a testimony to the way they all stepped up to the mark and did a brilliant job. So I just want to acknowledge that and hand over to Sarah, who will quickly give you a, a brief uh, rundown of the half yearly report. A wee bit different to your order of your uh, agenda. Uh, we do the half year report and then do the statement of intent, which looks forward. Sarah. Great. Good afternoon, everyone. So on the screen in front of you, you've got our financial results for the half year to 31 December. The airport continues to deliver top line growth, which um, for the period was about 5% ahead of budget and 10% ahead of last year. Passenger numbers, as you all probably know, are the key driver of our revenue. And in the period, um, passenger numbers were up nearly 9% for the year. When passenger numbers um, are increasing, two things happen. One, we see an increase in scheduled landings and loadings in the plane. Um, and that drives our airside revenue, which is the top revenue number there of 1.8 million. The second thing that happens is we have an increase in the number of users of our car park, which is the main contributor to the land signed revenue of 1.4. Our business park continues to be the, most, the smallest part of our revenue base, however, it is starting to grow, albeit slowly, and that will be the, one of the main focuses for Stuart, our new CEO, and our commercial manager in the coming period. So overall revenue for the year of 3.4 um, million, so ahead of budget and ahead of last year. So moving down, our operating expenses have increased significantly since uh, 2016, and, but however, that was uh, anticipated. The increase in revenue and expenses has primarily been driven by increased security requirements of our regulator, the Civil Aviation Authority, and um, we've had to increase um, the, service the service provision of our rescue fire service. We've also, as um, Tony alluded to, we've had some changes in the HR department and we've in invested in two senior roles in the year to match our revenue growth that we've experienced to date, but also what we see coming up going forward. So our EBITDA is just short of $2 million now for a six month period. Below the line, um, we have benefited from the delay in the start of a new terminal by um, saving about $150,000 on interest, but that will not, not continue into the next, uh, next six months, but also to the next year. Overall, um, our profit after tax is significantly ahead of budget at $933,000 for six months. I'm just gonna change order slightly there. Um, just talking about our balance sheet, our balance sheet remains very strong uh, with net assets of $29 million. During the six month period, we took three actions. One was we um, repaid debt. Two, we paid you as shareholders um, in, co in combined again to the three shareholders a dividend of 687,000, which was in line with our dividend policy of paying you 40% of our net profit after tax. The key thing for you to be aware of is that generated, provided to you a 6.4% return on equity, which is consistent with what we have delivered in the past. We've also continued to invest in the business and have invested $1.9 million of capital during the period across a range of projects, including the Watchman, our contribution to Watchman Road, um, initial capex on the new terminal, and some other smaller projects. 
Okay, looking um, ahead to, I'm just gonna move us. Yeah, so just in summary, in the year we've had increased passenger numbers, increased revenue, and the bottom line has benefited from the delay in the terminal expansion. So looking ahead to the next six months, we provide you up here with an indication of our forecast for the full year. We expect revenue will remain ahead of budget, albeit the growth rate, the variance to budget will be slightly lower as we move into the winter months. We expect the airlines to pull back slightly in their, um, their um, schedule, um, but we still anticipate forecast revenue of 6.5 million, which is ahead of budget. OPEX slightly up again, unfortunately against budget. Um, this is really driven by a, a strategic decision that management and the board made together to increase expenditure on our car park during the period. Um, for those of you who've maybe had some trouble with the barriers and so forth, hopefully you might be some, you'll be sympathetic to that in terms of we've made a strategic decision to increase our expenditure on that area to improve the service to our customers. We've also had some un unexpected costs around personnel and consultants as well to carry us through the period. Interest, as I said earlier, is down, but overall we'll see a net profit after tax of about 2% ahead of budget at 1.3 million. Um, just talking about passenger for numbers for a minute, we've had experienced significant growth in passenger numbers from up to upwards of 20% in the last few years. We, we're starting to tail back now. As of February, I think we were 10% up on the previous period. Um, we're expecting, um, we're about 5% up in March. We expect that to tail back off to our 3% um, long run average over the next few years. Oh, oh, we've got some graphics, there we go. Um, yep, so just in terms of the airport expansion pro project, hopefully you have all seen the, um, the start of the construction. We appointed Arrow International as our main co contractor prior to Christmas, following a very competitive tender process. Underneath Arrow, we've got a number of local consultants and local subcontractors working on the project. And um, the Arrow team themselves have a number of people based locally. We're really excited to get this project underway and hope it'll be finished um, towards the end of 2019. Watchman Road, again, for those who drive frequently along that area, um, safety has always been a big question mark and the airport were really pleased to join a consortium of yourselves, Napier City Council and NZTA to drive a new that development forward. Our link road was largely completed prior to Christmas and we're now waiting for the ground to settle before we'll complete that work um, towards the end of this year. Um, Tony talked about people. Yep, I just echo the sad loss of Nick Story. Um, he was a fantastic man and he was a real gentleman. Um, however, we feel that we're really secure in the fact we've now appointed Stuart Ainsley um, as our new CE. Stuart being Scottish, obviously that's 50% of a way there in terms of his um, ability, but actually in fact he's got very deep airport experience both in the UK and Australia and Papua New Guinea. And during the years, Tony alluded to, we've also appointed a new CFO and we've had a change in our operations manager. That's me, I'll hand over to Tony. Right, so uh, now I just want to run you quickly through the draft statement of intent, um, <coughs> which is, uh, we need your uh, <coughs> approval of. That's uh, really the, the document that uh, is your opportunity to gu guide the direction of the airport. Um, the, I'll, <coughs> yep. I'll flick through because the, the, the main things to note are that while we're expecting revenue to keep growing, we interest will become a major payment item in the coming years as we pay for the uh, development of the terminal. And so that will see uh, a drop in uh, uh, interest before interest, um, net profit and therefore a drop in your dividend. Uh, I was forecasting that we last time that we would have a drop in dividend this year, but because of the delay, the, it's going to happen next year. Uh, but it, it quickly recovers, and, and, and I just want to make it clear that the uh, statement of intent is based on our known landing fees. Uh, if uh, Stuart is successful in his uh, visit to Auckland and discussions with Jetstar, we will hope to exceed uh, that. Uh, it certainly has been meant that, uh, that we are very constrained on the amount of uh, capital that we have available going forward, and so we've had to defer a number of capital projects by, on this budget that we have here. 
Uh, in particular, we've deferred the extension to the apron. We've deferred the uh, final roading project. The, for a while, uh, we have a lovely road going across that was built as part of the project with you chaps. Uh, the tie-in to our existing roading will be less than we would desire uh, until we get a bit more capital uh, in the bank and we can do a proper job. So uh, it will be a temporary solution. It'll be fine, but uh, it won't be quite to the standard that we would like. Um, I really don't think there's much issue. You've had that in front of you, but the real issue is that we are facing a constrained period while we pay for this terminal and uh, without the help of uh, increased landing fees to cover the cost of the uh, fire service, we think we're fully justified in it, but we have to negotiate and consult. So that isn't built into the project. Uh, just looking forward, um, we are, <coughs> uh, the, the biggest uh, concern I have is the delay in extension to our apron. Uh, because if we have Jetstar looking for a new destination, which they've given us no indication of, but I live in hope of, uh, that would be, we would start to be constrained on the apron. So we uh, try and keep ahead of the game and ensure that the assets are there if they so choose and, and, and create a demand for them. So that, uh, and so if you look at the capital projects that are on the board in front of you, you'll see that we've got security fencing. That is uh, in the chance that uh, the security people uh, lift the requirements and require us to fence the whole airport and to start uh, X-raying passengers. Uh, we don't think that that's uh, very likely. We feel it prudent to provide for, but I'll grab that money pretty quick for open extension if we don't have to do it. So um, <coughs> just in terms of, uh, the, obviously the big focus is the, is the terminal, and then looking at our activity plan, you can uh, look, read that uh, for yourselves, but uh, the, the big influence we have is a real focus on improving our risk management at the airport. We have had no problems with it to date, but we feel as though, as the board, we would like a more focus on that, and Stuart is well capable in that area. So we're very delighted with it, and I also uh, draw your attention in terms of the fact that we intend to improve uh, our environmental impact, and the presentation to HDC, we gave an undertaking that in next year's statement of intent, we would have more uh, focused KPIs in that area. So we've committed to do that for next uh, statement of intent. And, and just because GK uh, was going to ask a question and he's warned me of what he was going to ask, in terms of the risk, the foam issue, uh, <coughs> we do have the foam that is uh, considered uh, by the EPA to be uh, carcinogenic. Uh, <coughs> so we are in the process of uh, looking for an alternative. It's not as easy as uh, one would like it to be to find a, um, a suitable foam. Uh, most of the foams that are available have uh, downsized for users and the environment. And so we have, are doing a search in conjunction with Task. I think we have found one. And so we will be changing all that. But no, to the best of our knowledge, no foam has been used on our airport too expensive to, for uh, practicing with, so uh, we don't practice with it. And so none, to the best of our knowledge, has been used, and uh, we have it securely stored in a in container. Uh, that means if there's any leakage, we, we've contained the leakage securely. So I, I feel as though we've got a good risk management plan uh, in that area. And uh, really, that was all I was uh, wanting to say. Thank you very much. Has anybody got a brief question for the Hawke's Bay Airport team that requires only a brief answer? <laughs> My, mine's very brief. <laughs> there you go. First of all, um, congratulations for ongoing great governance, uh, Tony. Uh, I see with the interest being such a big component of your uh, expensive, what, what rate have you projected for the uh, years two and three? Um, I'll answer it, Tony. So in our budgeting model, we've used 5%, which is conservative. Our actual rate, our actual rate is lower than that. Yep. yep. 
Thank you. Could I just ask one question as yep. well? A quick question. Um, given the, your deferred um, with the uh, deferred maintenance with the apron, um, when I was chair of finance a few moons ago, we never pa you never paid us a, a dividend. Has that? I know it's a, probably a delicate subject, but has that? D is the d dividend discussed between the councils and? <coughs> the the, the dividend, the, the, our clear understanding at the board table is that uh, if we were to ask uh, the councils for a uh, to forgo a dividend, that we would have a, a, a positive uh, response to that if we we so choose. But our other fifty percent shareholder puts a lot of pressure on us for a dividend. So. And we also at the board table think that paying a dividend is a good discipline, and so we uh, we, we believe it's, it's it's good practice to pay a dividend, and so we do that. But we have been made very aware that if it was constraining our thing uh, okay. expenditure, we should uh, come and knock on your door and, and expect you, a favourable response. All right. Do I have a mover that the Hawke's Bay Airport draft statement of intent be received? Moved by second. Councillor Hague, second uh, Councillor Jeffrey. All those in favour, please aye. say aye. aye. Against, carried. And, and a mover from the Hawke's Bay Airport uh, half yearly report. Councillor Taylor, Councillor Jeffrey. All those in favour, please say aye. Against, aye. carried. We, um, we don't have to talk about renaming the Native Bloody Conference Centre, I can tell you. Um, <laughs> Would you like to raise the naming of that name? So, item four is submission of remit application to local government New Zealand. Could I speak to this, please, Mr. Mayor? Yes, indeed. This proposal is for us as a council to formally submit taking a remit to the Local Government New Zealand Conference in July, asking Local Government New Zealand to approach central government to get them to amend the so sale you, and So you wanted to move that we do this? Oh, okay, yeah, I've, I'll, I said I'll, I'd move I'll, it. I'll second it. Seconded by Councillor Jeffrey. Do you want me to start again? Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 we, we, no. Right, no, no, okay. <laughs> to, to get this to the conference, I mean, you probably know that, but I'm just saying that for people who don't. Um, we have to get five councils to uh, support this remit. Hastings has given us their support in principle, and the Deputy Mayor and I are going to the zone meeting in a couple of weeks to get those numbers. Because the remit itself was developed in uh, consultation um, with the active assistance of local government New Zealand staff, I don't think there'll be any issue, and I think we're really on the right track anyway. Um, last weekend I spoke to our, our, our MP and the Minister of Police, Stuart Nash, about this. He was very interested because um, he's very much in favour of anything that we can do to reduce alcohol-related harm because what he's hearing as he goes around the country from his policing um, contacts that uh, they are really desperate to get some reduction in alcohol-related harm. By means of background, the 2012 Sale and Supply of Alcohol Act was brought in to allow local bodies to develop an LAP or local alcohol policy in conjunction with their community. The purpose of it all was to reduce alcohol-related harm. So Napier established a joint committee with Hastings um, in 2013, I think, and went through the process of developing our LAP. We held hearings with um, the police spoke, the, the retailers and the industry spoke, the DHB and the community, supermarket op operators, etc. We came up with a draft LAP in 2014, which was challenged by two supermarkets and a bottle store concerning hours of trade. We're currently in meetings with them to avoid further cost of responding to their appeals. So four years on, we have no, still have no local alcohol policy. And because of that, supermarkets and bottle stores are allowed to sell alcohol from 7 a.m. till 11 p.m. That's sort of the national default that was put in place for um, cities and towns that didn't have a LAP. The Far North District Council and I hear um, Hamilton have also just, they've, well, the situation's been really bad in a lot of places. Far North District Council has aborted the process of getting an LAP um, after spending almost $200,000 on theirs, which is under appeal from commercial interests. Christchurch City Council, after spending $1.3 million on developing an LAP, uh, modified it um, from modifying it and defending it from appeals from Hospitality New Zealand. Supermarkets and liquor stores last week gave up on trying to do it. 
In Dunedin, the council's LAP has been withdrawn because of legal fears. Like ours, it has been four years in the making, and again, like ours, it's been loosened after successful appeals from the industry and commercial interests. Dunedin Mayor Dave Cull, who's also the President of Local Government New Zealand, said, quote, the vested interest with the deep pockets have won a long battle with his council and also that local councils would be approaching the government about making changes to the way such policies were made. So obviously this is a good timing for our remit. So the remit, as you'll see in the papers, just simply says that the local government New Zealand seek the government's agreement to amend the Sale and Supply of Alcohol Act so that local alcohol policies are able to more accurately reflect local community views and preferences. I'm very hopeful that it will be accepted by other councils. It's very general, it's very broad, it just opens the door for that discussion. So Mr Mayor and Councillors, this experiment with local alcohol policies has been a costly failure for councils throughout the country. All we're trying to do is reduce the alcohol-related harm which is damaging our communities and we're unable to do anything because this law, law allows commercial interests to challenge any restrictions we place on their ability to sell alcohol. We owe it to our community to do all we can within our power to reduce harm and make our cities safe. This is one tool which was intended to do just that and has failed. And by supporting this remit, we will have started off the process of talking again to central government about how we can best support the most vulnerable members of our community who are most affected by alcohol-related harm. I urge you to support Thank you, Maxine. Any, any questions of Maxine? Or Hayley. Councillor Barry? Tony, did you have something? Well, I'd just like to, um, you know, to thank you for all the uh, work you've done on this and driving this, uh, Councillor Bogue. Um, it's ironic we have a, um, you know, a, a, a policy to uh, protect our uh, most vulnerable from Class Four gambling machines. Yet the abuse of alcohol uh, has far uh, more adverse effects on our on our families and our most vulnerable. So it is ironic that we have some teeth over the uh, class four gambling issue, but very little teeth uh, over the uh, over the uh, alcohol policy. And, and this remit uh, is just is going to send a very, very strong message, and it's going to be one of your defining moments, I believe. <laughs> can I, can I, look, I, look, I think we all agree, time's moving on, I think we all agree that this should go ahead. So all those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against Kid. Councillors, I would like now to talk about the representative review and can I, I would like to propose that we bring it up um, with item two uh, on the finance committee issue. So it's got to be discussed in any way. So do I have a seconder for that? S Councillor Price, all those in favour please say aye. aye. Against. So we now move on to recommendations from the standing committees, uh, reports from the Murray Consultative Committee held on the 27th of March. They've all been circulated, they've all been on other. Um, so, Councillor Tarpany moves that they be accepted, seconded by Councillor Delimore. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. And so we move on to the Coastal Hazards Strategy. Are they still awake? Thank you very much. So welcome, um, Peter and team, and um, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Your Honour. Uh, I'm aware that time is marching on, so we'll be um, brief. Um, I'd like to introduce Simon Bendel to my right, who is from Mitchell Daish and has uh, been the project manager for the uh, three years that, of the life of this project to date. And uh, to my left, Craig Daly, who was one of the panel members for the uh, area uh, from the Port North, uh, and we've asked Craig to present uh, uh, briefly the uh, findings, the report and the recommendations uh, as they impact on the Napier City area. Just before Craig starts, I'd also like to acknowledge that there are several other panel members here who have come along to uh, support uh, the recommendations from the work they've done. Uh, and they've also attended the meetings in both Hastings and uh, and the Hawke's Bay Regional Council. So there's, uh, we owe a great debt of thanks to the panel members who have given up a huge amount of their own time to very willingly participate in this process uh, to date. 
So I'll pass over to Craig. Thank you. I'll get straight into it. Um, so I'm a member of the Northern Panel, uh, representing the Ahariri Business Association, along with a considerable number of other people spread right through the whole community and all interests. So one of the factors that the panels um, had to consider to, in, in undertaking the work was that climate change causes a significant increase in coastal hazards over time. And the past is not a guide, and that's in terms of the timeline. Things will happen a lot, lot more rapid. Um, uncertainty also increases significantly with time. There will possibly be a wide range of outcomes, but we need to plan. We need to plan, and we need to plan now. <coughs> Coastal erosion is more visible, but inundation is likely to be a greater threat to more properties. Okay. Um, social and financial costs will be huge if we in fact do nothing. So <clears throat> there were two panels. There was a, um, a northern panel and a southern panel. Um, because of the large number of units that were identified in each of the cells, there was some prioritisation done to identify those that needed treatments more urgently, and there's some that were deferred for the strategy review, which would be in 10 years' time. So for Napier City, the ones that were assessed were Ahariri, Pandora, West Shore and Bayview, with the other ones mainly to the south of Bluff Hill, being Awatoto, Napier CBD, Napier City, Marine Parade, and also in the Northern Cell, the Ahariri Lagoon Unit. A key method used by the panels in assessing what treatment would be undertaken was a thing called pathways, and the panel has recommended a pathway for each priority unit. A pathway consists of a short-term response, a medium-term response, and a long-term response, and the timelines are there. However, the pathways are adaptive for an uncertain future. Right? The timeline for shifting between actions, in other words, from short-term to medium-term or medium to long-term, can slide and vary in the total timelines. The specifics of future actions can be adjusted in response to changing hazards as well. So although we have a response in the short term and the medium term, if things actually change, you've got the ability then to change the long term response. Right, I'll move straight to the, pa the Northern Panel recommendations covering Napier City Council. First of all, Ahariri, to the left is East Pier, to the right is the groin down at Sandy Beach. And what are we dealing with? The erosion risk in 2120, takes out East Pier Hotel, affects Harbour View Motel, takes out Hot Chick Boardwalk, takes out half of Harding's Road and also affects virtually half the length of the houses fronting Harding's Road. The recommendation in this unit is that in the status quo we retain the existing seawall. In the medium term that seawall gets extended and upgraded and also in the long term we move to further enhancement of the seawall and that addresses the, the erosion issues. For West Shore, you can see there the erosion risk for 2120 having considerable effect on roads and residential frontages. Recommendation for the West Shore unit is renourishment in the short term. In the medium term, it's a combination of renourishment and control structures. The possibility of the control structures should be, could be groins, and in conjunction with the nourishment, that also is recommended for the long-term treatment. For Pandora, and Pandora Industrial Area, this is not an erosion risk, this is an inundation risk and the 2120 inundation shows most of Pandora industrial area will be impacted by inundation. The, rec the panel's recommendation, the pathway in the short term is inundation protection and this would be a form of stop banking and the other red lines that protect the sailing club and the Pandora industrial area medium term enhancement of those stop banks and long term similar enhancement of those stop banks. 
for Bayview, and it should be um, noted here that what you actually do at West Shore impacts on what happens at Bayview, which impacts what happens at Furunaki, which impacts what happens at Tongoya. So the treatments that undertake at West Shore then, then to deter help determine the pathways that are chosen for the Bayview unit. And in the short term, that's status quo with some renourishment, moving into the medium term, renourishment and some control structures, which are likely to be groins or some other form of beach control structure. And in the long term, it's a continuation of that renourishment and control structures. That's a very brief, quick presentation on where the panel got after 12 months of uh, very solid work, 12 uh, workshops and uh, meetings, extensive reading of technical reports, technical advice. Um, the panel came up with our recommendations, which are in your full strategy, which you've all actually got. Craig, thank you very much for that, and thank you for being mercifully brief at this hour of the night. Um, and, uh, but I'm sure, councillors, some of you will have some questions. Councillor um, Bowe. Yes, thank you for that. What what does renourishment? What how do you renourish? What do you mean by that? Renourishment can be beach renourishment on the actual beach and renourishment in the intertidal zone. With what? With sand and gravels. Okay. Any but, other? I take it, Craig. Sorry, it's through. The, the nourishment would in the uh, in the uh, uh, in the coast would be sand only. In the, yes. Both from Greek sand. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Have you got any anything further to add, gentlemen? Or you, Peter, you going to have another go? Right. J just very briefly. Again, conscious of time. Um, so, one of the things that we did with this um, strategy was to take a bottoms-up approach, and you'll all be aware, I'm sure, of recent problems that have been um, emerging in Western Bay of Plenty, for instance, and in Carpety, where it was a top-down approach that was taken, um, you know, councils trying to impose solutions onto um, local communities, which has not gone down well. This study involved those communities, and they have decided what the adaptive strategy over the next 100 years should be, and they're recommending that back to the three constituent councils that are involved. So the report initially uh, and recommendations came to the Joint Committee, which of course is made up of representatives from all three councils plus three, we, three iwi organisations, um, and now it's coming back to the three constituent councils for adoption. So um, it's really important that you should bear that in mind. I guess the other thing to say is that we're dealing with uncertainty here, and that's why it's so important to have an, an adaptive strategy because none of us know how quickly or how high sea level is going to rise. Therefore, we have to review these things on a on a ten year basis so that we're looking to the to the future um, as it happens, as opposed to how we think it might happen. Thank you. So you've you've got the recommendation on page. Um, I've now lost it. I'll, I'll move the recommendation, Mr. Chair. Councillor Jeffrey has moved the recommendation. Do I have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Wright. Is there any further discussion to the motion? Well, I know time is brief, but I just want to again express my <coughs> deep gratitude to, uh, you know, to Craig and, and, and Dorothy and the people that have served on the evaluation panels, uh, to the lead consultants and the tag team. They've done an absolute wonderful job. Um, it's been extremely, uh, you know, robust and. You know, at best, it's, it's best guess, but it's a very educated guess using the best available information, and I'm sure that everybody will support it. Thanks, Mr. Chief. Any further questions or comments? Uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, is it, is it possible to amend that? Or we you can, we can put an amendment if you wish. I would just like to see the council adopt a similar uh, clause uh, to have workshops to better inform the councillors. I believe that the workshops would do as much good as they expect to have over at Hastings. So you're wanting to add an E to this recommendation? Uh, I would j just change one. Um, it's number, number B, I think. Hold workshops to enable council to consider the panel recommendations and that following those workshops, the recommendations 
and an officer report be reported back to council by the end of June, which will not delay any process that's in place with the coastal strategy. It's, it's a time off. I, I wonder what pressure that puts on staff to get something done by the end of June. We're talking halfway through April now. Do you have a comment about that? Um, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. They would I need to be very comprehensive workshops to bring a per the uh, council up to speed on it. I, I'm happy to put something in there about the council holding workshops so, so that the councillors can be kept up to speed and got up to speed. So if we can, if we can add... Uh, probably the probably it, it, the easier thing is an add an e. Yep. Uh, that Napier City Council. I would like to hear councillors, uh, other councillors' opinion on whether they really have, have the appetite to get more detail on it, or whether they're all up to speed. I'll second that. Mm. Yeah. Basically, saying it's I think it's a good idea. Not adopting this. Mm. Well, just while you're waiting on clarity, yes, I'd support the concept of workshops after a year of. Persistent work by the panel and a variety of people, <coughs> the science and all that commitment. No, so it's, it's a heck of a lot of information in science, and science, and there's still a lot of uh, factors Sorry. that we can't account for. So the better understanding we have of those variables, the better our decisions are going forward. So I'm supportive of uh, workshops. So just for clarity, can I ask, are you endorsing, you're happy to endorse the report, yep. but you just want workshops for the staff as well? You're happy to endorse the report as it is? But you wanted mm. to add in that we have workshops to keep the, the councils up to speed. Happy to endorse the, the, endorse the report. The, the uh, community panel have done some very ro robust uh, process yep. uh, getting to where they have. So uh, uh, there is a uh, time gap between now and the end of uh, the financial year. It would seem to be enough time to have the one or two opportunities to uh, bring the councils up to speed. Yep. Uh, the, the, do we have a proposal and second for this? I moved. You moved. You happy with that? Well, I'm more than happy. Um, there was a bit of um, communication breakdown after the committee meeting. I thought it was contingent on us adopting the workshops, but since it's not, I'm more than happy to yep. support it. And do we have a second for that? No. Councillor Wright, I think second to that. I'm happy to second it. Yeah. So that's fine. So we, we, we're endorsing the report as, as the ABCD tells us, but we're also saying that we want to hold report um, workshops to get the councils up to speed with the process. So, yeah, so we, we, is it an amendment? So we need to, shall we put the amendment? You know what the amendment is? So if you could just be clear on your wording, Councillor Gallimore, for the uh, Yeah, sure. And, and, and perhaps it could be read out. There's, there's absolutely no point in having that last piece in there um, it, uh, if we're going to endorse it, may I just add, uh, dear, that it's really it is a, a copy of the Hastings District Council yeah, uh, motion they passed. Yeah. Have they adopted their no. report? No, no, see, they, they haven't. We're, we're endorsing this report and adopting it now. I thought it went through. No. no. So what we're saying, if we're going to endorse the report, then... This actually, so uh, one of these things actually contradicts the endorsement. So I'm just wondering if that should be held workshop and never count. Uh, if, so, my, my so councillor, I'm just wondering as a suggestion, um, hold workshops to enable council to further understand panel recommendations. Yep, absolutely. Mm. Um, and that's all it needs. The object of the exercise is uh, to bring uh, councillors up to speed. With yeah. 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 So, so D would then just read if that's okay, councillor. Sure. That, um, so you've got e, e, it's e. E. It would be just to hold workshops to enable council to further understand the panel recommendations. Perfect. Yep. All right. So that's that's an amendment. I would move it. It's moved by councillor Dellingmore, seconded by councillor um, Jeffrey. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against carried. So now we have the substantive motion. 
which is A to E now, which again is moved by Councillor Dellymore, seconded by Councillor Hague. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried, done. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your patience. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, Traffic safety improvement centre. Councillors, if you go to page 74, please, which is traffic safety improvements in Jervois Town. Moved by Councillor Taylor. Seconded by Councillor Price. Are there any discussion or questions? There's not. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. And then the last item on the uh, strategy infrastructure is Chambers Street land legislation on legalisation on 75. That's moved moved by Councillor Brosnan, second by Councillor White. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against carry. Now we can do this as one. <laughs> yep. So then we move on to the audit and risk committee. Um, page 76. Interrupt me if you if I'm going too fast. Page 76. I just ask a question. Is Councillor Wise still with us or is she? Hi. Oh, no. Okay, thank you. No, she left as soon as we'd... <laughs> she, back to she wanted to talk to the <laughs> Yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to take these as per committee meeting. So if I'm going too fast, please ask questions I go through. Um, item one on the Audit and Risk Committee is insurance arrangements. Item two is reappointment of chair and independent member. Item three is the draft long-term plan, underlying documents. Item four is risk manager report to March 2018. Item five is the health and safety report ending 28th of February 2018. Item six is the investment and debt report. Item seven is the sensitive expenditure, mayor and chief executive. Any questions? Um, and item eight is the audit arrangements for the year ending June 2018. Can I have a mover for those reports? Moved by Councillor Wright. Seconded by Councillor Haig. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. Now we have reports from the Finance Committee held 20th of March 2018. We'll deal with item one on its own because it relates to um, one that was back here somewhere. Yep. Um, uh, item five. Um, That's item two. Item two. Right. That's item five there. And item one up here. So you do this one. Yeah. So. We're talking about the Hawke's Bay Local Authority. Oh, shared services. Item one first. Sorry, shared services structure change. Move. Have a mover. Yes. Council White, second Council Hague. All those in favour, please say aye against. Aye. And then we have the representation review. I'd like to move that the uh, that the additional options be discussed, um, Mr. Chair. And I'm sure that Councillor Bogue uh, would like to speak first. <laughs> Sorry, just to explain what the, the options be discussed. You know, the, the new options be discussed for the um, electoral review. So we're we're dealing with a a suggestion. So a suggestion for this one is that all you're going to do is take um, this page, uh, page page sixty. Yeah. Oh, the new ones. I've got sixty. Got this one here. No. New options be discussed. So move the additional oh, yeah. And then just in the we've got we've got the, the paper on the main agenda which is which is the uh, new information and I move that that be received I have a seconder seconder councillor Haig all those in get favor please say aye. aye against carried so now we move on to page seven and page 90 which is the representation review and we have a a, 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 a motion before us, which is the, as you've got in front of you, you've got it there. Status quo. So, Councillor Jeffrey, what did you want to do? Did you? Well, well, I, there is there are new options. There's there's uh, there's two for the mixed and two that are feasible for full ward. And I like them discussed. I mean, I've got my own. Well, at the, at the end of the day, do I have a mover? For the motion that's in front of us. Yes. No. I'll move that. 
Do you want to move a substitute motion? Or do you want to move a substitute motion? Yes, I do. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and do we have a seconder? What is a substitute it's, motion? It's a substitute. Substitute. Well, yeah. the staff have put a lot of work into preparing for other options, and I think they should be discussed, just not... So, Councillor Jeffrey's motion... No, point of clarification. Um, Councillor Jeffrey, I'm, I'm not sure that we need a motion to discuss. We can we can discuss the paper and then make a motion later. Fine. Yeah, well, you we no. don't need a... So you're free but, but, to discuss. Yeah, but my recommendation is different than the than the, the officer's recommendation. Mm. So you, I'm you could dis you could discuss and then make fine. a motion. No, no, it's fine. Do we have a mover for the for the? No, the, the, the new paper would have come first. Yeah, you, you, your worship, the new paper would have come first if we hadn't rejected the order. And, and uh, you know, my motion that was it to be discussed. I've got my own view, obviously, but there may be other views. Uh, you know, there's some options here. So that was all I was trying to achieve. Um, but if you'd like me to uh, speak to it first, I'm more than more than happy. Yeah, can I can I ask governance to tell us what we should be doing here? I'm totally lost. <laughs> um, so <coughs> through you, Mr. Mayor, there's no requirement to move a motion to discuss. Right. Um, so as you're aware, we have. Um, the original recommendation. We have the standing committee's recommendation, so you're aware of what those are, and there's been additional information that's been provided to you since then. Um, so what we can do at this point is um, the mayor can open up discussion, um, and you can discuss all of the options Without. at your disposal, <laughs> and then decide either on the, the floor is open for discussion. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Just a question. Can I not move the motion that's on the table? This is Can I ask so the answer? A, that's at the, the discretion of the Mayor as to whether he wishes to open up the discussion. discussion first. Well, well let's, ha let's have some discussion first. It's been recommended that once some discussion, well, there'll be plenty of time to move the motion. You can, sur you can surely move a new report or discuss a new report, and this is a new report, so that's all I'm trying to I've do. opened the floor for discussion. <laughs> Good as God. Lord. If you want to discuss it, discuss it. Yeah. <laughs> well. No. A, a number of members, um, Your Worship, went uh, uh, supported the status quo by some measure of default. Um, you know, I, I'll only speak for myself, but I felt that the one-membered wards were mostly were, were inappropriate, and I also didn't believe that our uh, most deprived ward had um, adequate representation. So I. You know, look through the um, the, uh, the the stats and quotas, and uh, and asked staff to prepare a report um, using a change of boundaries that would achieve that would get rid of the uh, the uh, one member wards and effectively have eight ward members, two more than the status quo, and have four at large members, and what that would achieve would mean all of our citizens on the roll could vote for at least six people or possibly seven. So, um, you know, so uh, it, to me it was a better de demographic tool, but it also put an e extra um, a member into the Taradale ward and into the uh, Onikawa ward with, uh, you know, the, um, and it, the, the whole quota um, represented um, in the demographics a lot better in the social economics. To achieve that, uh, we had to move um, Te Awa, um, um, which was down here as a uh, Toto, but the populace is obviously in Te Awa, into a Hariri. And the rationale for doing that was that uh, Te Awa is a, a coastal um, community and the CBD is their favoured shopping centre. They enter it by Te Awa Avenue. They don't go through, um, you know, through the, uh, through the you know, the western suburbs and shop there. They, they, I mean, they've got that choice, but it is a natural fit for community of interest and also for, uh, you know, for, for demographics. So that, that, that move, but also Taradale, uh, also Tabatia South, um, I considered it a, a better fit with the Taradale Ward than the, the current only Kawa Ward. And Tabatia South, historically, um, it was developed as Green, Greenswood and Wairangi Downs and it bordered Anderson Park and it, now a lot of it borders Parklands. And by doing that you achieve 
optimum, uh, you know, optimum quota, you know, you, uh, uh, you know, for for um, you know for for, for the demographic um, and, and social economic um, you know balances that the co the commission will require if this is challenged. It's very very robust. So that's about all I have to say on it. Anybody? We're 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 in discussion at the moment. So has anybody got any other? I'd just like to ask a question of yep. uh, Councillor Jeffrey. Um, of the tables that have been submitted to us, could you give us a um, heads up as to what your uh, what table you're leaning towards? I'm leaning towards um, table two, new option two, where you have three wards and you have four at large members, so you're reducing the at large and you're getting rid of the one-membered wards so that they can be walked, uh, that they, they can be worked more effectively and are more representative. And, and, and also by changing the, those two little boundary trinks, yep. you also um, alter the quota so that it's, it's weighted towards the only car award, and that's a requirement, a statutory requirement of the commission. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's a compromise between what we're going out with and what Dr. Gwynne was advocating and, and Councillor Bogue's been advocating. Are you clear, Councillor Bogue, where I'm coming from? Are you, are yes, you? I am. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you. My, oh, it's okay, I'll speak in a minute. Yep. Given I now know which table I'm looking at, because <laughs> I've become slightly confused, um, I, I actually give some weight to this um, system, uh, this mix, mixed system. Um, and it comes down to vote. Often, you know, I, I've, I said last time when we fell into default that I felt that one councillor only was probably not uh, a, a good idea. I, I felt that they probably would work with two or maybe three. I like the boundary changes and I feel um, that everyone would get either six or seven votes and I, and I think that sounds fair to me. Uh, under a mixed system uh, arrangement. So I'm not adverse to this suggestion and I'd like to hear what the rest of the discussion is around the table. Thank you. Um, could I say something? I personally do not support any at-large councillors, full stop. Um, this is a rearrangement of the wards. Um, it, it concerns me that you've got Bayview in the same ward as um, Tiawa, am I right in saying that? It would be absolutely huge and I wonder how logistically how it would manage if it were all wards. But um, yeah, no, I, I actually just support yeah, the, the original uh, Bayview, system. Bayview hasn't been moved, Councillor Bogue. Oh, okay. Bayview sits where it sits. The only movement is, is um, the residential coastal area of yep. Tiawa and the, the, the uh, southernmost Tamatea to Teradale, the, the you know the, the borders on mm. Anderson Park. So so, and one of the requirements of the, uh, the of the commission is that it reflects uh, mm -hmm. geographic communities of interest and socio-economic. They're, they're the criteria that they used. Uh, okay. you know, and, uh, no. Councillor Taylor, um, I I I like a lot of the things that um, Councillor Jeffries is suggesting, and I think things around. Um, not having single person wards, uh, all of those sorts of things. Um, but I can't quite get my head around Awatoto um, or. Um, what, what are you calling it down there? Uh, uh, Timothy is south to Teradale. Timothy is south to Teradale. The one down here, though. No, there's only Tiawa. two. Tiawa. Tiawa, yes. Yeah. Tiawa. So you're saying Tiawa instead of Awatoto. Yeah, yeah, but in table two, that option that's here. You've got McLean Park and Tiawa um, included in the Ahariri ward, and and I just have some difficulty yeah. linking those oh, two part, together. Part, part of McLean Park's already in the um, in the Ahariri ward. Councillors, I know you've probably already given up on your dinner, but um, <laughs> having this kind of informal discussion, we could actually discuss it for the next week. I wonder if somebody's prepared to formulate a motion that put so we can actually get down to tin tacks and rather than having a broad discussion. Well, I'm not prepared to move unless people understand it and, uh, you know, either support or reject it, you know. I'd like to make a move, I'd like to move that we stick with the uh, status quo motion that was on the table at the last meeting and voted 11-1. Yep. 
I'm seeking that. So. Yes, I'll accept that at this stage. So there is, a, there is now a moved and second motion that we stay with the status quo, which, is, which was, as uh, um, uh, Councillor Price points out, was actually voted 11-1 in favour at the committee stage. Is there any discussion to that motion? Councillor Wright? Um, if we're going to have a mixed system, I believe that the status quo is the fairest and gives people the most opportunity for votes. But I do take on board the one-person um, wards. And if, I if you want to go towards, then I, I, my, dis my difficulty is a split system, I'm going to go with status quo. But if there is a move towards having um, more representation in wards, then I want to go with the officer's recommendation which uh, original recommendation which came to us um, regarding the uh, full ward system. And um, yeah, I, I just think the minute you start getting a split where there are more people in wards and, and the, the number of people standing at large reduces down to four, to me it's pointless to have people at large at that point. I think the original local government decision about the split between wards and, um, and people elected citywide was done to appease everybody at the time right. um, to get a system It was where, a happy compromise. Yeah, it was a happy compromise. I think it's it ha hasn't not worked, um, but I do take the point about those um, people who are uh, representing the ward on their own, and I am slightly now leaning more towards the original recommendation from the officers of a full ward system, and, um, and I'll just see where the debate goes. Well, for what it's worth, my view is that it ain't broke, so we don't need to try and fix it. It's working. Um, we've had good councils for the last couple of terms, and, uh, and, and I see no point in changing. That's my personal view. Councillor. I'd just like to comment, that's what Mayor Arnott said when we challenged the at-large system, what's wrong with it. I'm not in favour of any electoral system that has any at-large councillors, because at-large elections, whether they be for three candidates, three or six or twelve or whatever, they all um, are stacked against low income and minority candidates, and I would like to see the original um, recommendation go through. You know, we had our own staff do the most comprehensive examination and anal analysis of all our elections over the last 30 years, and they came up with the fairest and the most representative and the best system being the at, at la sorry the ward system the full ward system. At large elections have uh, um, at at large elections in their analysis had the lowest voter turnout, the least diverse candidates, and the lowest number of candidates. The mixed system we have now is only better because of the inclusion of ward councillors. The full ward system was proven to us by our own staff, was shown to be the fairest and the most democratic. So are we just going to dismiss that and stick to a less fair and effective means of representation? It could look to many like we're protecting our own positions. So citywide um, candidates and at-large elections favour candidates who come from affluent parts of town because these areas have a much higher voter turnout than low-income areas where the turnout is poor. The greater turnout in areas like Ahurere and Teradale will naturally result in a positive discrimination for at-large candidates from those areas in a citywide election. And on the other hand, at-large candidates um, from at-large elections discriminate against candidates from areas with low voter turnout, like Marainui or Mariwa, particularly if they're from minority groups, as voters from majority groups will not see them representing them. So it's expensive to run as an at-large candidate if you're not well known across the city. Um, whereas with the wards, it's much easier for a person from that community to run in their own ward just because they can get around it more easily and they can get to it, they've got a smaller area to cover. So, you know, I just think our job's to serve the people of, of Napier, basically, and um, the best way to do that really is to get out amongst the people. So and that's a lot easier for a ward councillor. You're I'm, speaking against the motion that's on the table. I am, yep. I'm speaking against any that have at-large councillors in them. So, of course, the Mayor's elected at-large. And I'm rest, rest assured I'm not trying to protect my position, um, Councillor Boat. <laughs> um, you were elected on a post too, weren't you? Is there any uh, further questions? Not forgetting we're talking to a motion that is before us.
just ask you a question of clarification, and it was an issue I hadn't thought of until you just said that. If we were to move to a full ward system, how would the mayor be appointed? Oh, still at they large. Still at large. Yeah, it's under yeah. legislation. Yeah, yeah. It's a okay. separate point. It's a completely yeah. separate. Point. I would have four, four, four wards, four mayors. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Councillor, oh sorry, are you still speaking? Uh, am I able yep. to speak as well? Yep, yep. Um, I looked really closely at the um, position that um, Councillor Jeffrey asked staff to look at in regards to splitting the splitting the wards, and I obviously looked particularly at my, at my ward, the Onikawa Tamati ward, and I found I asked Jane to um, give me some maps on how those splits might work. And I found them really clumsy. For instance, the, the Tamatia um, boundary cut off at Lancaster Street, which, if you know, connects York and Westminster. And so everything south of that became part of um, part of Taradale, and everything north of that became part of the new Onikawa Tamatia ward, which also encapsulated parts of Puramai and parts of Maranui and other, other parts. And I, 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 I didn't um, feel like you could clearly identify which ward you were in by the same grounds that you can now and knowing that you're in the Taradar ward or the Tamati and Kawa ward. So um, I, I, I found that clumsy and um, in listening to Maxine and the other the other um, you know information that we were provided, I, I'm actually sitting on the fence as well. I, I see benefit in um, in moving to the full ward system um, and I think that you know the staff set out a really clear um, um, space for us to do that and, and gave a lot of good reasoning in that but I also agree that I don't think we have a system that's broke speaking as a member from a from an from an individual ward um, I don't find it um, too difficult but I have a lot of support from a couple of at large councillors who are in my space so um, yeah I'm really I'm really in the middle and so if you ask me which way I was we've had for and against and sitting on the fence <laughs> has anybody else want to make a comment <laughs> yeah Councillor, have you already spoken I think so. Oh, yes. Do so now. <laughs> just, to, just to add a, add a few comments. Um, Councillor Bogue talked about um, cost and, and to run, and I've just I looked up some of the figures. Um, Councillor White spent one thousand four hundred and forty-five for at large, and Councillor Bogue spent two thousand three hundred and thirty-seven. The chap sitting next to me spent zero. At large. I wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I might say, Count uh, McGrath, that's the most he's ever spent. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, candidate Dave Hannay spent zero dollars and got 3,083 votes. And he didn't, he didn't make council, yet someone in a ward who got, I think, 1,700 votes gets in. Same for David Trim, received 412 votes from the public. 4,000. 4,000. He didn't get in, yet people who received less votes did. How is that democratic? Now we go to central government, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, 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 I've had four against sitting on the fence and a question that no one knows the answer to. Now, Councillor Hay. So just a question, I apologise if it's been answered before, given that we're tired and grumpy and given that people are starting to want more time to consider some options, I must admit Councillor Bogue, I'm even starting to think around full ward and what that might look like, even though you and I have had robust discussions about that prior to this. I'm really interested in Councillor Jeffrey's concept of big awards so that you don't have councillors like um, Councillor Dallymore on his own. What would happen if we went out to the public with three options for them to consider? Is that permitted? And if it's not, are we in the it's danger not, of making no, a hasty no. decision tonight just because we kind of want to get this through? And will the local government well, commission we, pick up on the that? The short answer is we can't go out with three, with, with, okay. with three options. <laughs> Councillor Taylor. No, no, I was just going to say we can't go out with three options. I ask we have a, to have. Can I ask a question? Um, we have a preferred option that goes out for consultation. Yeah. People come back to us, and then we make a final decision. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we've got time here to to hear back from our community and and get this right. But we still need to go out with the preferred option at this stage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the one that's on the books. Yeah. That's the one that's that generally said our people support. So we've got a motion before us that that is our preferred option. I'll just have my right reply if everybody's. Um, yep. Yeah spoken, um, we don't make the final decision. If it's challenged, it goes to the local government commission. I was trying to find a middle ground between the 
status quo that our staff mm. don't support at all, and 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 the f uh, but but the the public do, you know, the general public at the moment do from our, all our surveying, and I was trying to find a, a, an elegant a middle ground. Yeah. Councillor Jeffrey, you're doing a very eloquent way <laughs> of your writer reply for a motion put by Councillor Price. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm, so you, no, you do no, not have a right of reply, <laughs> Councillor <Jeffrey. laughs> So we have a motion before us. Um, it is The motion is that basically the status quo remain. We've all had a fairly good talk about it. So the, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? Nay. So the motion is carried. So we're going out with a preferred option of the status quo and um, and we'll get feedback from. Watch this space. Where's my pajamas? Well, that's sort of meeting time. Yeah, you're, I've got a, yeah. 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 You do realise that the motion was that, that it also said there'd be no community boards. That was also part of that motion. So. Oh. All right, so we then we move along. Um, <laughs> item three from the Finance Committee was financial forecast to 30th of June. Item four is uh, Hawke's Bay Museum's Trust Draft Statement of Intent. Item five is the Hawke's Bay Museum's Trust Half Yearly Report. Item six is the quarterly report for the, t for the six months ending 31st December uh, 2017. And do I have a mover for items three to six, please? Councillor White, second Councillor Taylor. Any questions? Put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. We then move on to reports under delegated authority. T tenders let. Hmm? None. None. Official Information Act requests. No doubt lots. Um, resource consents and the schedule of documents under seal. Moved, Moved by Councillor Price, seconded by Councillor Haig. Could I ask a question? Yes, you can. Round resource consents, probably a question for Richard. I note the Housing New Zealand um, scattered through there in terms of getting approval for units to be built. What kind, are we keeping an overall eye on what that's going to look like as a city, whether there's any issues around neighbourhoods or quality of the housing, etc. How, what kind of control do we have over that? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. The, um, the short answer is that we're in dialogue with um, Housing New Zealand and at quite a high level, and um, they have been quite responsive to altering some of the plans um, that we have found to be a bit wanting in terms of, um, of what it's doing in terms of the urban environment. So, so I think that uh, the process has been as good as it, as it can be in that regard, and some of them they've completely abandoned as a consequence of our advice. I'm sorry, just a supplementary. So are you happy with the spread that we're consenting in terms of the, where they're placed over the city, making sure we're not ending up with dense areas, etc.? You, are you looking at that as well? I think that proposal in particular is, is, is quite good in that regard, um, and that it does set the pot, those um, dwellings, a lot better than some of the other proposals that were on the table to have you know, 25 or 30 in one particular spot. I'm sorry, one more. I noticed that most of them are two bedroom units, so who are you envisaging, or who is Housing New Zealand envisaging would live in them? Are we looking at elderly people or...? Um, yeah, I think a lot of the attachment now is single male people, um, and, uh, but there will be some families or small, you know, small families in there too, yeah. Thank so you. I can support that, yeah, the, the majority of the users and building that's happening is to comment to meet that particular market in the two bedroom area there was less demand in the four and the three area so that's where that focus was coming from all right so put the motion all those in favor please say aye, aye. against can i have a motion to exclude the public please aye. councillor wright aye. second by councillor brosnan all those in favor please say aye, aye. 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 yeah 